This is Deandra Beatty, and you're listening to The Bowler Show. Hi, this is Jackie Bowling, and you're listening to The Bowler Show. This is Jeff Riggles of Storm Products and The11Frame.com. You're listening to The Bowler Show. Hi, this is EJ Tackett, and you're listening to The Bowler Show. This is Andrew Pfeffer, the Pfeff, from Bowling with the Pfeff, and you're watching The Bowler Show with Dave Waslo and Luke Rosedahl. Tonight, we close the book on the victory lap for The Bowler Show. All good things must come to an end, but we're going out with a bang. For the final interview, we're joined by PWBA member, multiple medalist for Team Mexico, and creator and CEO of Volat Athletics, Sandra Gangora. Following Sandra, we'll have a number of appearances by several guests we had on in the last year, some regulars from the radio days, and anyone that's meant something to the show. Confirmed appearances will be made by Jeff Riggles, Steve Klompkin, Aaron Smith, Mark London, Matt McNeil, Stephen Casella, Jim Cripps, Adam Barta, James Graham, and Norm Duke. In addition, we're sending out links to dozens more, so stick around to see who else might drop by. All right, welcome one, welcome all to the final edition of the Bowler Show. I am Dave Waswell alongside Luke Rosedahl. Actually, I'm not alongside him, but I'm alongside him on the screen. And this is going to be a fun show. Um, I guess you'd call it bittersweet, maybe, Luke, here being the last show. I know um, the first four years that I had it on the radio and, and was doing some other things, it was a little bit different format and stuff, but... Um, and we did have a conclusion in 2017, so it's not like this couldn't come back in the future. But I, I'm thinking this is probably the last show. Yeah, yeah. Unless uh, something's ha something happens when we both get old and crotchety and retire or whatever that whatever that looks like. <laughs> I, I said something about that to Kim. I said, "Yeah, I might, uh, I might end up bringing this back once I retire." And she's like, "Aren't you already retired?" <laughs> Like, well, not really, you know, these bowling yeah, yeah. terms are kind of a, uh, they are a lot of work. So, uh, right off, let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll thank our sponsors first here, and then we'll get oh, to the, the chat. Uh, Pete Evans in the chat wanting to know why it's ending, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, with him, and then uh, before we bring on Sandra. But uh, as always, we want to thank our title sponsors, Storm Bowling, of course. Without them originally, this show never would have happened, so a lot of people at Storm that helped bring this show on board originally back in 2014. And hopefully a few of those will be able to make it on today. Uh, I also want to thank Ken Keegan, of course, at I am bowling. He's very instrumental in getting me started on the show also with uh, some nice jerseys um, originally. So thanks to Ken, uh, other sponsors on the show that Luke and I are affiliated with turbo grips, uh, bowlers, Mark, cool wick, uh, Bobby Jackson's.com. Uh, Double J's Pro Shop, SNH Custom Homes, and of course Luke's favorite hashtag SRGBBFS. And I was not looking at anything when I, yeah. when I said that, Luke. Just so you know. Yeah, you got you got it down just in time for the to move on. So, all right. Well, Pete, just to let you know, it's just uh, to be perfectly honest, it's just time. We 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 brought this back. I, I love the format and everything. It just it would seem a little different this year to the bowlers. I'm not sure why. Had some trouble getting some guests on, and, and I'm not sure. It just didn't work. And, and Luke and I have a, a million other things going on in the bowling world, especially Luke. And Luke even has this thing. I think it's called a full-time job that he also does somehow. I don't know how he puts it in there. And, of course, uh, to Josh and Luke just answered you there in the chat. Of course, the breakdown pair is going nowhere. They will be uh, on, on the air still, of course. So. Uh, Brittany Brown, hello. We're going to have a lot of fun with this, Luke. We've got no structure today other than our first guest. So um, the reason we're bringing her on is she was scheduled before and un unfortunately got sick about, uh, I think it was three weeks ago. So unfortunately, she wasn't able to come on then. So we'll uh, we'll get her on here in just a few minutes. Uh, Craig Graham, sorry to hear you're ending this at this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to be a pro bowler. That was a, that was a <laughs> long time ago. And now I'm now I'm a, a right and left-handed house hack, to be perfectly honest. The house uh, house conditions uh, basically set how I score for that night. So I, I <laughs> will not lie. I'm, I'm controlled by the lane man. So, but uh, yeah, there's there's just not enough hours, not enough hours in the day. And, and and to be perfectly honest, I could still probably squeeze it in. But just just on the the Sunday night, 
which is the perfect night to do it because a lot of people are bowling and, and you know, there's results that night. But it also is a conflict as, as Luke and I are either bowling or I'm running a tournament or whatever. So just a lot of factors. And we'll talk maybe to, right at the end of the show about uh, a little more about that. But Luke, you got anything going on in the bowling world you want to get off your chest before we start here? Your last chance on this uh, forum, at least. Obviously, the breakdown pair, you and Jonathan can uh, talk about anything then. But uh, anything anything you've got to say, uh, you know, as far as the show or, or anything else going on with bowling with you? Uh, not a whole lot at the moment. I know the the tour, uh, the men's tour is getting ready to, to fire up here pretty quick. And the women's tour isn't too far behind them. So... Um, it has been kind of slow in bowling in general for the last the last couple months. And so that's that's part of it, too, is that the tour seasons aren't as long as they used to be. And so it's harder to find things to talk about. Um, and a lot of them, uh, you know, a lot of people have regular jobs that used to be if you were a pro, you know, you could just be a pro. Uh, but now a lot of the being a professional bowler is kind of a almost like a side gig. Hmm. Uh, so it's a little bit. It's a little bit tougher sometimes when there's not. We had Jonathan and I have have trouble on the other show too when there's just not a whole lot going on. Uh, but I think we uh, we'll have things to talk about here <laughs> here in pretty short order. So other than that, did you did you say short order for Jonathan or did I just pick that up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you sir were tall enough to catch that one. <laughs> Well, Mike, Mike and some others are really bad at John. I, I actually side with Jonathan. I'm like, man, that's too much. I, I'd get to a point where I'd be like, hey, guys, yeah, uh, I, I, I get it. I'm short. That's, uh, that's that's not as funny as it used to be. But oh. anyhow, yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a rough show, but it should be it should be fun. Look, we're gonna have you know people clicking in and out here. I have no idea how the show is gonna go. We might talk with somebody for two minutes. We might talk to them for twenty minutes. It just depends on how many people click in and and you know. To be perfectly honest, who it, who it is a little bit, we'll uh, we'll kind of gauge that as we go. But um, you know, uh, there was only a few people. I had John's listening. I knew he had to be listening. Yeah, yeah. John, you know I always defend you. So, but anyway, Luke, uh, you know, over the years, I can only think of a handful of people who haven't been on the show uh, in the original days. Bill O'Neill never made it. Pete Weber, uh, Wes Malott, believe it or not, never could never could connect with him. Mm -hmm. And really only a couple others, you know, obviously there's plenty of pro bowlers who haven't been on the show, but yeah. uh, at the time, like you said, you know, with the show being on Sunday and being on TV and stuff, uh, even uh, Tom Clark, the commissioner was talking to the bowler who won that day and saying, Hey, I, you know, if you, get, if you can come on the radio show yeah. and they would call in and, uh, and we would talk to them right after they, you know, won. And a lot of times it'd be a, a major or somebody's first victory. And it was very consequential news in the bowling industry and it was right away so that was you know that was always good so and yeah that's that's probably the part i missed the most i think is the biggest change is as you know sometimes we're digging for news or we see something with the usbc we want to bring that up but basically when you know when those guys were bowling on on tv for a tour title and and you know that night we came on the show that was that was the best of the best then mm -hmm. so looks like yuri uh yuri uh, your buddy there out in uh, that yeah. part of the that part of the country has just found the show. Yuri, how you doing? Yeah. Um, Luke, he wants your take on house shot versus mm. sports shot patterns. I think I I know my take, so I. I'll let yeah, you that's a, that. yeah, we'll we'll just call that an inside joke. Oh, okay. um, yes, we do. Uh, we want to go on ahead and move on here and talk to our uh, our first guest. Sandra is waiting and ready for an introduction. Awesome. All right. Well, she's a PWBA tour member, of course. Uh, she's involved with Volat Athletics, as you said in the intro. And uh, she's got a real interesting story in her bowling world. And we've tried to get her on a couple of times. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, but it's going to work out tonight. Let's bring her on now. Her name is Sandra Gongora. Sandra. Sandra Hi, guys. Say, How are Hi. you doing? Now, she, now you, everything's good with the connection. Everything looks great. Yes. Yes. Everything is good. Uh, it's amazing how now we communicate, right? Uh, I just remember when I was younger and it was just impossible to see a lot of things, you know, online and live. So I'm just thankful uh, for you guys uh, to invite me to the show. I'm very excited to be here today with you guys. And hello to everyone that is watching. <laughs> 
All right. Well, that is a great introduction. Let's let's get right into it here. As as you know, uh, we talked a little bit. This is kind of a celebration show for us. Unfortunately, this is going to be the last bowler show. So you're actually going to be technically the last interview that we do. The rest of the people that come on today, we've had on before. But uh, since we didn't get you on, I want to make sure we got you on before the show uh, went away. So let's let's just get right into it. Talk talk about the upcoming PWA a tour. Talk about your plans. You're bowling every event. Uh, let us know what you're doing. Sure. Um, obviously, you know, uh, being, a me being Mexican uh, and being a country where we don't have a tour, we only compete, you know, uh, locally with the tryouts and representing my country around the world. Uh, it's exciting for me and, and I'm just thankful to be part of the PWBA since it got back in 20, uh, 2015. I, I, I started to commit 100% to the bowling. So, this year, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I am happy to be competing with the best bowlers in the world uh, in, your, in your country. I love United States. You guys are amazing. What, what you do with, with the sport of bowling, I wish I can help my own country to, to grow this, um, you know, this is almost like these feelings about the sport. So yeah, uh, we start the tour in May. And we are going to, uh, myself, I'm going to be traveling the whole tour. Obviously, um, you know, hello to my sponsors. They they have been with me, um, obviously, through through all these years and the struggles that we might, I might mention a little bit what happened for, you know, with the COVID and everything 2020. But I am just very, very excited that once again, we are here in this world alive, and I'm just going to go and knock up the door again and try to knock as many spins as uh, as many spin, pins as I can. Well, it, it seems like with everything you've got going on in the bowling world, you're goal oriented. Are you that way uh, with the PW, PWBA tour? Do you have goals that you've set this year, you know, to get a title, uh, maybe make a certain amount of, of caches? What, what are your goals this year? You know, I think as, as any athlete in the world, whatever sport we play, I think we just want to show up and, and, and win, right? Like that's the main goal that everyone could have, even if it's, you know, a league or tryouts or whatever. In my case, after what I experienced two years ago, almost three years ago, you know, with the COVID and everything, I think my head, my mind, my heart, everything changed a little bit. I think I was putting so much pressure uh, to myself because I don't have a title yet. Uh, and you know how, how sometimes you hear, you know, these comments, why, like, why haven't you won? Like what is happening? Like you are talented, but you're not winning or whatever. So I had a lot of pressure myself because I knew I could, I've been second, I've been third, I've been, I've been there, but I just haven't been able to, to hold the title, uh, the trophy, but I just feel after everything we have been through with the world after 2020, now I'm just going to do it. No matter the result, no matter what, what is going to happen, my goal is to be there, give myself the chance, give myself the opportunity to, to do what I love the most. Now with the with the help and company uh, of so many people and, and, and including my, my brand, which is kind of like my baby that it was born and then I'm just taking care of it. Uh, really, I'm just trying to, to do what I, what I care and I love, but definitely I will try to get a title. <laughs> okay, well, you talked about your brand. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. We've, we've seen a lot of it on Facebook and We've seen a lot of things, uh, you know, where you've connected with other bowlers and you've got them involved with Volat also. Uh, tell us how you got started. I know this is, a, you said, I've read before that uh, you've got, a, you had the vision for this. Is this something you've been thinking about for a while? And uh, just talk a little bit about Volat. Yes, I'm going to try to be as short as I can because my English sometimes, I mean, get so excited and then I repeat things. Um, but Everything about the brand started around 2017, uh, 2018, when I first went and represent Columbia 300 uh, in a demo in Japan. So I went there and I was just kind of like working, you know, with, with, you know, throwing the bowling balls. And I got very excited just to see another culture and just to see different, different techniques and everything. And then once I was 
kind of like doing a pro-am. And then I see this lady, a very cute Japanese lady wearing like a, like a bowling dress. Uh, it was kind of like a long polo, sublimated with her name on the back. And then I thought, that's super cool, you know, because I, I, I experienced college in the United States a long time ago. I don't want to say when, <laughs> just uh, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40. Uh, but anyway, so I remember having uniforms that, I mean, if we think about back then, I was like, we were, you know, wearing these big polos, embroiders, and now we have all these technology that can be amazing. So I saw that idea and then I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. It would be amazing to just renovate, you know, renovate bowling. Anyways, that happened 2018. And then I always wanted, I'm a graphic designer. I graduated from Wichita State University as a graphic designer. I didn't have any classes of 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 um of clothing or anything but i always like to create new things and logos and things like that so it was kind of like in my in my mind in my heart i really want to do something like together like bowling but at the same time i need to find my way to work but that was back then right and then you know i started to research because i wanted to do everything legally so in my country as in any country you gotta kind of register the name and follow processes pay this fee this fee so i did that and i wanted to name this brand something related with bowling so first thought was like i'm just gonna call this 12 12 x you know like 12 strikes well couldn't do that. The name was already taken. And mm. then I tried the word 300. And then I started to do this and this and nothing was available. Now it's like, okay, well, if I really want to do this, what is going to be my, my best name? And then I looked at my wrist and I have in my wrist a tattoo that it says, um, fly with your own wings in Latin, Alice Volat Propris. And then I thought, and I saw I'm just gonna call it Bolat because Bolat means fly. And I committed to bowling 2015 when it came back on, on tour, you know, the tour got back. And I'm like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right now because I don't know the future, right? So I tattooed myself this phrase back then, way back then that the brand was happening. Uh, so everything kind of started to go together and I end up naming Bolat you know, the brand Bolat. Then that was around 2019. I put a hold a little bit of that because it was going to be very difficult for myself just to kind of afford everything. Like I had it to, I had to research, what am I going to do? Like I want to bring my brand in the United States to bowl on tour, but everything is so expensive and I was by myself. So I put that in a hole and I already had the patterns of my dream dress which is one of the things that i'm very proud of a lot of women around the world are wearing this dress and uh, i am just very happy but back then i just had that in my in my computer right so 2020 arrived and i'm again you know in january is like you know we make wishes in our culture like 12 wishes you eat the grapes and i'm like i want to win the tour i want to be this and that and that and that and then we got hit by COVID. and at the beginning it was not so critical because i was like okay we're just gonna be locked down for one month two months and then when we got notified that the tour is cancelled because this is really huge and when you started to get all these situations where around you someone has died like my neighbor died uh and then my uncle died and then everything was started to be so much for me and then i just couldn't handle it now i'm getting into the topic of maybe you were gonna ask <laughs> you were gonna ask that <laughs> after but i just get on i just get on excited um and and i just kind of put everything together uh but this happened but that happened thanks to my depression it is not something that i that I want to feel again, uh, ever. And that happened in 2020. And the reason that Bolat got alive was because of this depression. Uh, when we got notified that bowling was canceled, 
I didn't have any tryouts. I didn't have any international competitions. I didn't have any tour. And talking to friends, well, what are we going to do? Like bowling centers were closed. Like I, I actually live out of bowling, right? Like I do things with bowling. That's how I get money and everything. So I'm like, I really lost my mind. Um, it was a very difficult and sad situation for myself. And I got this uh, good friend and everyone knows him. It's Jason Belmonte. Uh, he asked me, uh, it was around September, October 2020, when he reached out to me and asked me, can you help me to create some designs? Because I've been he heard this, uh, his designer quite a few years now, like four years, five years, whatever you see in his social media, I mean, some of the things I, I, I help him with uh, these things, which obviously makes me very proud as well. But in that moment, he asked me, hey, can you help me? I mean, we are locked down, like we, I need to create, he's always creating things. So he's like, I need this and this and this. And then I had to tell him, I said, mate, I'm struggling, like I, I, I'm not able to open my computer. Like I actually don't know how to do it. I am struggling. I am, I'm losing my mind. Um, it's almost, it, it feels almost like I have to start learning things again. This is a, a, a part of the depression. I don't know um, if you guys have experienced something like this, but it was kind of like confusing and everything was black and dark. Um, but that really, was something that gave me a purpose to stay alive because I didn't want to be here in this world. Uh, I had, I actually had to tell Jay, uh, Belmo this. I, I say, mate, I, I don't know what to do. I am, I am not waking up in the mornings. Like I was just telling my family and my friends, I'm not waking up in the mornings. I have nothing to be motivated. They, the COVID has taken family members has has been rough for 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 my heart for my my mind. I just haven't been able to handle it. He was very kind. He helped me. Uh, I contact Dr. Dean. Everyone knows Dr. Dean. He was helping me a little bit uh, as a psychologist, and and we were doing exercises. And little by little, I started to kind of like, okay, he was the one. Uh, Belmo and Dr. Dean. It's like find something that you can focus on, right? So Bolat really gave me the motivation to to do something, to feel that I was worth it, like with something else besides bowling. So after these moments, uh, I had to, to talk to certain people to be able to, to get help. So uh, Cliff Barnes, uh, the owner of Bow uh, Bowler Smart, uh, and obviously with Cowick, he was the one that uh, opened the doors for me to manufacture Bolat. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful because I had started to get a lot of support from the bowling community, the bowling people. Uh, I, I told my story, I was like, I, I gotta make this happen because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So Bolat, it's already uh, a little bit more than a year old, and we have sold many, many items. A lot of people are part of Bolat. One of them is, you know, I have mentioned Jason Belmonte. I actually asked him to be partnered with Bolat because I needed his help to be sincere. I was lost. I didn't know how to do things at the beginning with the brand. And he has a lot of experience, you know, he's good with business. And I was like, well, can, 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 can you just walk me through it? So he was helping me at the beginning. Um, I made, uh, you know, uh, meetings and I started to create little by little something. Then we released Bolat and then thankful because Verity Crowley, Diana Savlova, Jesper Svensson, Stephanie Johnson, a lot of the great bowlers in the world are part of Volat right now, and we want to include more people. And this is just because I, I, ex, I explain and share that Volat is giving me a chance to help. I know I'm creating, I'm creating clothes, I'm creating designs, but this is a chance for me to give, uh, to help because people have helped me. So we have been collaborating with these amazing bowlers. We have been doing 
amazing things. And obviously soon we are gonna drop Jesper Svensson's collaboration. We're thinking in next month. Everything has been going so good. I'm, I'm, my head is busy, I'm busy. Uh, I'm trying to just enjoy the life that we have today. Um, and and that's ha this this motor which has been volat has helped me to see bowling in a different way. I just I'm all about wanting to help. You know, I just want to see if someone if someone is around me. You know, while bowling, like I just wanna like we are not alone in this world. Sometimes we think we feel that we're alone, but there are a lot of people that really can help us do something. If it's little, if it's big. That's why I'm here, you guys, because you guys are doing so much for the bling in the world. I just want to be part of the, the greatest people. <laughs> Everyone who who wants to, you know, get all together and make bowling bigger and stronger. Uh, I think this is the main vision and the main mission of Bolat. This is this has came, uh, has actually turned a little bit the path of the brand because first I just needed to do something to keep my head healthy but now i'm turning it in i want to help more people we are um belmo and i are doing almost soon a um kind of like a giveaway where we are gonna collect the money to give to a charity or to a place uh foundation for uh, mental health uh i i just wanna i just wanna say and take this moment to say thank you guys for everyone who has been following bolat and um so thankful that had some people had purchased items to help but also just one yes i just want i get so emotional i'm sorry uh, i just wanna i just wanna say uh that we're here for you um the bowlers uh, we are here we just wanna some some people don't get the chance to talk uh with with you guys or in another you know interviews but but I, I just take advantage of the moments that I have to say that uh, we are all here for if anyone needs something, we are all here together as a big family. Yeah, and, and you know, we all went through this a little bit during the, the, the COVID year and, and bowlers. I saw, you know, a lot of a lot of stories and a lot of people who, you know, united over this and, and reading your story in the Bowlers Journal and, and be perfectly honest it's pretty inspiring to see you know where you are now from where you were and and uh, i know we talked off air about uh, talking about this on the air and uh, i'm glad you shared that with everybody everybody needs to you know kind of take take a different look at themselves and maybe at, at bowling and what they can or can't do for bowling and what you know what people are going through in, in certain situations so um, let's move on and, and talk a little bit about your time with team mexico talk about how long you've been with the team uh, what's upcoming with uh, Team Mexico? Yes, well, I am, I am, I am obviously uh, always excited to to compete with my colors, you know, with my Mexican flag, and 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 I've been on the team since very little. Uh, I started the youth, you know, the youth team. I think when I was 14, 15 years old. So it's been a while, and then uh, around 2002. 2003 is when I became uh, on the adult team. I was pretty, I was pretty young. Um, I've been always, always bowling my whole life. My mom, my mom was part of the team uh, Mexico uh, before I, I was born. And then while I was growing up, she was traveling around the world, you know, uh, competing uh, from Me uh, for Mexico. And she was never, she never, she did. She actually never had a chance to to try on tour, uh, I guess, because she had me, <laughs> and it was just a little difficult to travel from Mexico with a with a child. But uh, I I'm just trying to do this for the both of us. But yeah, so it's been a long time since I'm competing uh, for my country, and I I just get very excited every time you know we we travel the world, and obviously we we share the lanes with the same people that I see on tour. It's just amazing how bowling can put everyone, you know, in the same spot uh, from different countries. It's just very, very, I don't know, I like it so much. Um, this year, uh, we have um, 
Central American games and Pan American games, you know, because of COVID, everything kind of everything kind of pushed, you know, a little bit, you know, in the future. So now this year, um, there are these two tournaments that I'm assuming in Pan American games, you know, the USA uh, team and Canada, I mean Canada and all the zone, the American zone competes in this tournament. Um, and I have to, I have to obviously uh, try out. I know the the girls and the boys in the United States are are finishing the tryouts. Well, we do it this in in April. Uh, so, so it's a lot of things happening. I have to organize a lot of things besides, you know, like Mexican competitions and then uh, on tour. I'm the only Mexican. <laughs> people call me key, uh, people call me here like, the crazy Mexican because I, 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 I'm, I'm a professional bowler, you know. So, uh, in a good way, in a good way. Like, not many Mexicans have the chance to, to do it full time. Um, or I don't have any kids, and obviously I'm not married yet. So I kinda, I kinda have the, <laughs> the chance to, to do a lot of things um, and, and enjoy, you know, and, and be traveling a lot. So. Yeah, so everything, hopefully everything is good this year. Um, a lot of things are happening. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I've got one more for you here, and then I'm going to turn it over to my partner here uh, who's going to talk to you in just a few. Uh, you know, a couple of things I just I learned that I didn't know you were nearing 40. I never would have guessed that to start with. So <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, right? Let the cat out of the bag there. I know, right? And then, uh, you know, I've, I've always wondered, there are certain bowlers that Luke and I watch, and Luke and I are big fans of the PWBA Tour. Anybody who watches our show knows that. Uh, what I, I want to know, like, from just inside your head, what do you think it's going to take to get a title? Obviously, there's there's going to be weeks where you've got a better look or you might get lucky on a show or whatever, but your, your form is so good. What, what's missing and, and what's going to get you that title? Yes. Um, okay. So for many of of, pe of the people that have haven't um, known a lot of what I've been doing all these past years, obviously I went to Wichita State University for college. I really learned a lot when I was on on the college, you know, program at Wichita. Um, I don't want to say that Mexicans um, needs uh, we need more training in our in our country. Uh, uh, so. I think I have maybe it's more mentally that it's something that I, I'm changing and I'm something that I've been, you know, having, you know, psychologists and, and the sports psychology and everything like that is something in maybe in my head that thing behind in some things just because I live in a country where I don't have all these tools, you know, like Kegel and, you know, like uh, the training center, the ITC, you know, like so. I, I I train myself a lot, like here, you know, I have the help, you know, actually Belmo gives me, you know, like some lessons, like he I work on this, work on that. Like I just try to ask the best people, the best chess in the world, just to get this knowledge from the distance, for, from distance. So what what is, what is something that I, that I think uh, that sometimes can, can be the, the main factor? Uh, definitely a little bit of that confidence maybe in the moment to take these decisions um, because I know I, I know I'm able to do many things but maybe maybe for some reason I end up maybe trying to do something something that is not you know right there in the moment you know like bowling uh change the ball or like maybe i'm in the zone i know i'm i know how to do many things on the lanes and maybe i i myself confuse a little bit because i want to throw it fast and or whatever or have to slow down definitely i think is here and that's something that 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 i am working like it's it's been different from past years too because of all the things that I have told you about. Uh, so I know now whatever I'm doing, it's for my good, right? Like whatever I'm doing. So I'm just going to be doing the best I can on the lanes. Obviously I have the help with the reps and the sponsors and everything. We have the, the best equipment in the moment to, to, to compete. And it's just let myself happen. Like let myself be uh, I think it's one of the things that that I that I in the past maybe has been something that that 
hasn't really helped me, but I feel much different. It's just more of a trust, you know, trust your instinct and throw the ball, you know. All right. Well, real quick, Luke, before uh, I turn it over to you, I, I just talked to Belmo. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have a place right now where he can get online, but he wanted to wish you well. And, and he thanked you for uh, talking mm -hmm. about him here on the show. So I wanted you to know that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to mention the 40 number, but since day one, I hadn't brought it up. <laughs> I, what, what, um, all, pretty much all the questions I've had, I had you, you've answered, but I did want to talk about this because as you were getting ready to come out of college, that's when the PWBA folded or are pretty close to pretty close to that is when the PWBA folded. And so I think for, you, Kelly Kulik, uh, maybe Shannon Pluhowski that didn't have the opportunity. Um, you come up and you bowl on your national team. And um, and so you lost that opportunity then. And then having COVID shut down another year right after it just got kind of started back up again. So it's been a couple hits for you. Um, so obviously you had plenty to do with your with your national team. I've got your, I've got your bio up here and there's all kinds of medals um for team mexico you won with uh wichita state a couple times the team event or the uh the national championship the team national championship rather mm -hmm. um so now again you you've talked so much about your uh your your mental outlook how it's different what what do you think um I don't know. I'm trying. I've, you've answered all my questions, so I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying to find a question in there, but. Um, I think I think I know what you're trying to ask. So let I, me I'm, just. I, yeah, I'm working my way there, but. I think I'm I'm reading your mind. <laughs> okay, but yeah, because you didn't have the chance to compete in the PWBA to begin with. I think that there were a lot of people. You would. I think you would have had a lot of success. You would have definitely gotten uh, a bunch of experience, and, and I think that everybody would have would have known you and not having that chance uh was that maybe a little bit of the part of the, the the pressure coming back in 2015 and then now you've had the covid thing and uh so again just talk a little bit more about kind of where you're at now yes uh before before i had the opportunity to be uh, in Wichita State University, which I say hello to to the coaches and the program, I, the, the guys and the girls are doing amazing. Uh, I before that, I pretty much had a coach at home, and and obviously, you know, I mean, I think I was just learning what people around us knew. Like it wasn't very updated information. So I went to Wichita State University for that same reason that I wanted to be better. I just wanted to be able to compete around the best bowlers in the world because I saw them on TV, Liz Johnson, Kelly Kulik, you know, my good friend, Clara Guerrero, like she had the chance to compete when she was younger, a little bit with the guys, you know, uh, on tour and, uh, since she was, you know, bowling on, on, I mean, she was living in the United States. So being in another country has been always like, I'm a little far, even though I'm close to you guys, like it, I'm a little far, like I don't get that experience. Mm -hmm. So it was very important to me. Uh, it was very important to me and to, to my career, I think, to be in college bowling, um, had to learn a lot. I just knew how to hook the ball before coming to, to Wichita. I just knew how to hook at the ball. If I needed to bowl the gutter straight, like I wouldn't, like I would just, uh, you know, pull on my hair. Like I was not able to do that. So I learned a lot of things when I was in college. And then little by little, you know, with the help of the sponsors, you know, now the bowling balls that are amazing. Like I'm able now to, to with the, you know, I've been visiting the ITC, I've been visiting Kegel, I've been visiting, you know, Mark Baker, like I'm, I'm trying to get the help from you guys in the States because I don't, I don't have it in my house, in my home. Uh, so I kind of feel a little behind I, in some, in some situations. Now the youth bowlers, obviously they're going to come and they're going to bowl amazing on tour because they have everything fresh. They are just getting everything now. Uh, 
the best bowlers in the world. Yeah, they have my age, but they have they have they have good coaches. They're around great people, and I don't want to make my my people here at home feel bad. I'm not saying that we don't know anything, but I'm just saying I need to be there with you guys so I can be better because otherwise I am just going to be behind. And this has happened for a long time. And yes, that's why I put so much pressure on myself as, a, as an athlete, as a competitor. You always want to do your best. And I, I knew I was capable because I've been close. I've been close to the gold medals. I've been close to the title. I've been close to to many things and I I know I need to work harder. So that's after COVID and before COVID, this is something that I, I will never st stop doing. Maybe my head was definitely different from, from before COVID than today. And everything is about how you see and how you interpret uh, things and how, how you take the bad moments to learn instead of getting upset. You know, just a lot of things has happened uh, to help my my bowling. I am trying always to get help from anyone. Like, I'm like, help me, help me. Like, yeah, I, I wanna be better. That's pretty much what I, what I want. I just wanna be better than yesterday, better than yesterday. So I think for this year, definitely has to be different because the pressure that I used to feel, it's gone. I have so many things that I'm thankful and and I just want to be there again, you know, no matter no matter hap what happens, no matter the result, I just want to be there again and give myself the chance to to be around the best. Now, what's you kind of touched on uh, something I was going to ask you here now, uh, what's one thing that you would tell somebody um, who maybe feels like they have kind of a lack of opportunity or somebody else has a, an advantage over them or uh, having a setback like uh, getting into college and then the PWBA tour folds and then you have COVID. So it's you you have a lot of things that you probably could be negative about or you could regret, but you've completely flipped them around and turned them into something positive. So what would you tell somebody else that maybe in your same maybe where you were at during COVID, maybe they're there now. What would you, what's something that you would tell to them? Yes, look, this is a very important uh, question and, and, and topic that you're bringing. I think sometimes we don't realize how, how, how we're feeling. Like we just start becoming or putting ourselves in a routine where we don't, we don't really know what's going on and we are probably stopping doing things that we love just because we are in these situations. Like we, it almost feels that you are trapped in a, in a hole, you know, like you just gonna have to get out. Uh, one of the biggest, the biggest advices that I can offer is that as for help, I was blessed. I am blessed because a lot of good friends yep. and family they were really helping me around these moments. But I I had to speak out because you can see someone looking normal, but you don't know what's going on in here. I I actually became more, em, 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 I empathize more with people uh, since I had depression because you really don't know what's going on, you know, outside. And now it's about, really like if you're feeling something just tell someone and we uh, and i say we because i'm i'm always here like someone has to know uh that there is something that we, you can do when you have these thoughts now uh the moments that that came obviously uh the very the very sad moments uh, it was because we didn't have the opportunity to go out and bowl uh, so one of the, the biggest, uh, another biggest advice is like, just find something that you really love. If it's bowling, soccer, whatever it is, find something and commit and, and, and it will help your mind relax a little bit. It's just, sometimes we get in this role that, that really you get lost a little bit. So ask for help is the first, the first thing that everyone has to be able to, 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 to ask for help um, because without that help, I don't know, 
I don't know if I was gonna be if I I, I was here with you guys today. Like mm-hmm. really, like a lot of people helped me through these moments. Well, that's definitely great advice. Um, and whether it's whether it's because of something or uh, everybody handles things differently. And so no matter what you're going through, just there's better, you can flip it around, you can turn it upside down, you can turn it into a positive, you can use it as motivation. Um, there's all kinds of good that can come out of it, not just for yourself, but for a lot of other people too. Uh, before I throw it back over to Dave, I was going to add also that my wife is Mexican, so I totally understand the crazy Mexican <laughs> woman thing. So, <laughs> so well, anyway. Say hola, hola to her. <laughs> say hi to See. her for me. I, mm-hmm. Luke, I, I I never knew that. I, I knew she was crazy, yeah. but I didn't know she was Mexican. So that's a, yeah. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that's separate. Apparently, separate that's, been, that's been confirmed. Sandra has confirmed. That's that's the reason. So. <laughs> All right, uh, Sandra, who, who's uh, who's your? Let's you can narrow it down to one, or uh, you can use multiple uh, girls here. Who's who's some of your favorite people to cross with? I that's always a difficult uh, a difficult question because I really enjoy, as I say in the earlier, like I really enjoy being on the lanes. Uh, but definitely, I love to go with Liz Johnson. You know, like she she is. She's quiet. She's very focused on her things, you know, and, and she's amazing. So I love to I love to be around her. Uh, Kelly Kulik is always uh, someone that I also enjoy to to be around. Um, when Caroline Dolin Bar was bowling a little bit with the beginning of the tour, I enjoyed. I'm a, a huge fan uh, to to Caroline and Dale. You know, they have been always great friends and. You know, when I was with with Storm, they were always being super, super nice. I I love them. Um, and from people, I I think from let's let's talk about the youth because there are a lot of youth, uh, younger younger girls that um, that are amazing. So I love to to be around Verity, for instance. You know, she's so talented, and um, and and now that we're working together, you know, it's just kind of kind of kind of cool, you know. To, just to be around her uh, and um, I don't know uh, Daria is always fun as well um, Diana uh, Shano Kif is is also someone that I like to to go with because you know like she tends to really like you know help uh, when we're kind of like in the same pair and we kind of you know like tell the move, not the moves, but just kind of like, hey, is he hooking? He's not hooking, you know, like it's not everyone does that. So she's she's very, she's very nice. Uh, definitely, you know, I mean, my friend Clara, um, and we never get to really ball together for some reason, like we're very far from each other. Uh, but it's always fun to ball with people, you know, Rocio Restrepo, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't have a really favorite one because I think everyone, like a lot of people are amazing. I just want to. I just want to be there. <laughs> All right. How about uh, how about your favorite place in the states to bowl? Okay. Well, I've been bowling good in Lincoln um, and also Las Vegas. We love Las Vegas. I think the stadiums, the arenas, are amazing. Um, I also love. Um, Los, uh, well, it wasn't really Los Angeles, Ronald Park, you know, like I, I really like uh, some of the areas. I, I think I just remember where I went, where, where I bought good. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, there's Florida and you know, the, the one that we went to Florida. I, I don't know, you guys have an amazing places and the centers are amazing. So um, yeah, I just like, I mean, I just like the ones that I bought good. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's obviously the, the proclivity when I bowl onto her. Of course, I have a fondness for certain cities, and a lot of times it's because uh, I bowled well, and uh, so there's a lot of cities I really didn't like because I didn't bowl well. Um, before we let you go, we kind of skipped over this. Uh, what? How did you originally get into bowling and um, being in Mexico? How, how did this happen? Well, uh, a little bit earlier, I mentioned that my mom was on the team. So my mom is a um, 
or she was because she she still bowls one league a week but she's like no i'm just i don't like to to bowl 130 like i just don't want to bowl 130 i'm embarrassed uh but but she used to be amazing uh she's a lefty you know how you know she was very very like the simple the simple shot but she was very good so she was on the team so she met my dad i think they were they were each other uh, they were bowling leagues like separate leagues and then for some reason they kind of met in in a league or something like a bowling league uh so they got married the whole story and then i really the first the first thing i knew when i had memory uh it's like bowling like i'm i'm about i'm about to see people throw the ball like it was just something that seems very little so thanks to my parents that's pretty much the answer because they were they they are bowlers they were bowlers and i got the chance to grow up to grow up with the sport and i was never forced to actually this is funny because i was never really forced to bowl you know how some parents are like follow my steps you know like so really no like i obviously the stories i don't remember it's been by the way i'm 37 i'm not close to 40 years old <laughs> but but just to, but just to think that I, that we just you know we just started this year 2023 and just to think i mean i'm from october like october 6th is my birthday so it's a long way to be 38. anyway so when i was uh, around five six years old i already pull uh hold the ball with one hand now i question why did i just pick up the ball with two hands you know like i should have done that since i was little but anyway so i could ball you know since i was very very little uh my dad had to buy me a bowling ball a six pound bowling ball my shoes and everything because i was asking for it but i obviously don't remember those things um i needed i asked for a locker i'm like i want a locker and i want to save all my stuff here when i come i'm just gonna open my locker and you know get my get my stuff and then my first competition was around eight years old nine years old in the youth the very um the very the 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 younger you can bowl like a national tryout here in, in my country is like eight nine years old since then i got in love with the sport um, i knew that i had to sacrifice a lot of things to be able to be better uh, i fell down so many things in the so many times in the bicycle because i wasn't really practicing riding a bicycle like i was on the center and bowling and and many many things i just didn't do as a as a kid but i would never regret you know these moments where i just wanted to be picked up to school then i went to mcdonald got a happy meal and go to the center <laughs> that was pretty much what we would do because my mom had to train like she was really training you know uh and then wichita state university happened uh before that actually i went to one in, to, in 2004 that was when i met jason and old school and so many bowlers uh we were bowling the the world's the youth world championship and i got a, a gold medal and a silver uh bronze medal and i that's when i met these guys we were so young and and but and then i i needed to I needed to find me a way to get better. If I have stayed, guys, in Mexico, I don't think I have been. I have been. I, I could have been competing at this level. Um, I needed to. I needed to cross the border. I needed to go there, uh, and and really get help. So, yeah, it's always been bowling. <laughs> All right, before we let you go, why don't you talk a little bit about Volat again here? We're getting a lot of people in the chat. I'm not sure if you can see the chat or not, but a lot of people talking about uh, Volat and, and supporting your company. Um, Luke has added the link there to the to the website. Uh, just tell people how they can uh, get in contact with you, maybe other than the website. Uh, you guys are so, so, so wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your, for your support. Everyone that has been visiting volarathletics.com uh, we have we have been doing collaboration with with the go. best bowlers in the world in, including including uh belmo verity diana uh and stephanie jesper and that image that's i'm wearing the dream dress this dress 
has been inspired. Obviously, I, I had to do a lot of research. I, I wanted to create a dress that was so comfortable and so easy to put on uh, and not have to have the difficulties to match the jersey with the bottom. You know, sometimes you're like, ah, like this skirt doesn't match. Oh, these shorts are big and doesn't fit. So like, I really wanted to create this piece and to to give it a um, a nice, you know, a nice, a nice fit like, uh, and it's inspired by the sport of golf. You know, some golfers wear, wear these dresses and we have shorts, uh, shorts underneath that we can all wear. I'm giving all this information so people know, or girls know that you just put on the dress as a jersey, but it comes, you, you buy the, the dress and it comes with a pair of shorts that are super comfortable. I, w I wouldn't do this without trying it a million times. So obviously I did a lot of research. And now, because now with the thanks, uh, thanks to Coolwick that I can obviously do um, sublimation, right? Like you can create, and, I, and this is what I do with the brand. So Belmo, for instance, where, where the bolat and make them fly, you know, um, the jerseys on tour, mm -hmm. and the same is going to happen with Jesper. Like he's going to be having bolat jerseys with the help, obviously, of Kulwick. Uh, so yeah, this is what happening is happening with the brand. We are we are trying to to always innovate, but also feel good at least um, in the women's side. Like I just want people to to feel good while bowling, to feel comfortable. Sometimes you put on a shirt or like pair of pants or something and they're tight or something and you're not comfortable. Well, I want to make you guys feel more comfortable. So we are obviously now experimenting the bowling dress. Uh, Betty T has, has wear, uh, wear it. Um, a lot of the girls have, have wear the, have tried the dress and I'm just thankful because they give it a shot, you know, like they, they're like, hey, let's try it, you know, and and I have received a lot of photos and messages about the dress and the designs and everything. It just feels very nice when I see a photo and I get tagged, you know, um, I just want to say thank you guys for for giving me this moment, for giving me this, this space to 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 say hello to your to your people, to your fans and and I just, uh, that's Verity, so she's obviously modeling <laughs> modeling the, the dress. Uh, it's a very, very comfortable piece, but we are going to have a lot of things in 2023, so stay tuned, all um, That's for Facebook and, and Instagram. And obviously follow the Bolat staffers. Um, they have always, you know, uh, great, great content. Uh, about bowling so i'm just thankful thank you guys for for this moment absolutely and then we want to thank you for staying on a little long here we uh i just looked at the <laughs> clock and it's, it's gone so fast here it's already been an hour so uh we want to you know, right we want to respect your time here too and, and let you get <laughs> on with what you need to but um it, you know like i said your, your story is inspiring we all read it in bowler's journal Mm -hmm. and, and to see where you're at now and see how, how confident you are and how how much you've done with a lot. It, it's really fun. I, I've always been a big fan of yours. I, I've got two people, uh, Leanne Holsenberg and Deandra, who have always been my number one and number two favorite bowlers. But uh, I would slot you in at number three. No offense to the other two. <laughs> Thank <laughs> anyway, you. I've always That's been a big nice. fan. Your, your form is just so classic. And, and, and yeah. you know, you can see it's just like it's it's rhythmic. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of Valerie Burst here. It's it's just uh, you're gonna win. Let's put it that way. I, I'm 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 certain of that, and uh, I'm I'm glad we got you on. I know we we tried and and you got sick and things happened, and uh, I'm just glad we got on. We got to hear your story, and and you you really seem like a nice person. <laughs> Thank you so much. I I told you at the beginning I talk a lot, so uh, yeah, definitely was going to be an hour or, or so, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you. If you ever need something, guys, I'm always here. Like, you know, I love, I love bowling and I love to help. I, I just want to be around the best. And, and I just want you to know that I'm here. If anything, you need help with anything. Uh, I'm a designer. I love designing and all, all, obviously uh, with the brand, 
we are trying to help people. Uh, if you if you know someone or if someone is listening, right? Uh, just just visit Bolat. We we really are trying to to make something very good with the brand. Not only not only selling stuff. It's just it, I want to go beyond. It's more about helping and make bowling stronger. We in these moments we just gotta be together. We just have to stay strong and not not care about any other things that are separating us from the important um uh, you know moments so yeah that's it so thank you <laughs> all right well very well said and uh once again thanks for coming on the show sharing your story and uh, and good luck in the future sandra thank you so much all right. happy new year <laughs> <laughs> you too all right, Luke. Uh, that's uh, that's our final official interview of the year. So yeah. um, it, it couldn't have gone any better. I, I don't yeah. know if you've been looking at the clock, and all of a sudden, an hour was gone. Okay, it could have been better from my side. I could have actually spoken, but <laughs> we all know that that doesn't happen. So, <laughs> well, I reached out to Verity earlier. She hasn't seen the message, so. I, I really wanted to get her on and see if there there's a lot of people that wanted her to be on <laughs> see, get through that. That was a, that was a goal of mine. I want to give a shout out to one of my golfing partners here. He's been listening to the show and he says, we're doing a great job. So Tom Bradley, thanks for always listening. You've always been supportive of, of the stuff that I do, even in the bowling world, even though you're not necessarily a bowler. So Tom, thank you very much for listening in Luke. What do we got? 50 or so people in here. Yep, uh, about one ish watching now. Yep, and we've uh, we've got Mr. Klomkin and Mr. Cripps in the uh, waiting in the wings. Okay, well, bring them in in order, and we'll uh, we'll kind of let uh, let the other one know that uh, they they will be next. So, uh, right. who, who we got up first? Well, Steve Steve hopped in here, so I'm going to put him up, and there he is. All right, one, I, Steve, this is going to be an undisciplined uh, interview. This is not even going to be an interview. We're just going to chat about bowl and see how you're doing, spend a few minutes with you here. I just wanted to bring people on who have been uh, contributors to the show over the year, and nobody uh, other than uh, maybe Matt Canazaro has been on as much as you uh, other than a couple other of our, our regulars. And and the insight and, this, and you taking the time and, and drilling four balls or mapping them out for me on the show. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. And, there, and I'll tell the story here in a little bit, once again, how I started with Storm, but uh, thank you for everything you've done for the show over the years. And, and we appreciate it. All right, Luke, you want to walk him through the sound problem? Stand by Steve. Yeah. yeah we, we can't hear you. This, this thing likes to mess with sound settings. So you might check your uh, microphone. And actually, while he's doing that, I think I'll I'll I, I'll tell this story if and if he can't get his sound up real quick. But oh yeah, he'll get it. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> the 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 things that this uh, that this software likes to default to just don't make any sense. So it like it likes to default to the one set of speakers and the one microphone that that don't work. So I remember, yeah, I remember having trouble the first time on here. It, it was asking me to do stuff with the microphone that I wasn't necessarily familiar with. So uh, do you want him to try to click back in maybe Luke, or that's probably not going to matter. He's got to get it through the settings. Yeah. It, it's somewhere in the sound settings. I don't know what it looks like on mobile, but uh, it should be something in the audio settings and then the audio input. All right, Steve, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us. Okay. Uh, are, are you on a laptop or a PC right now? Did he say phone? <laughs> uh, say 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 yes for laptop or phone. Or la laptop. No. Uh, personal yeah, computer. Okay. No, he's he's on a phone. I'm pretty sure just okay. the orientation. Okay. If it's phone, it's tricky. Yeah, I, I think he actually. Angel said that he had to call in last time because we had the same problem. <laughs> no. So, do you have a PC or a laptop you could get on? That might be our, our only way out. Five minutes. All right. Sounds yeah, that, that'll work. That's perfect. Cool. We'll uh, right. talk to talk to the backwards bowler here for a minute then. 
All right, let's 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 do the interviews backwards here. Let's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be originally Steve. Now it's going to be Jim. Uh, Jim, it, I have a question for you right off. I saw saw something about a jersey. I want to know: Do you put your name on the front of the jersey or the back of the jersey? <laughs> Well, now that is that is interesting because I ordered one. It was a little bit of a rush job because uh, I've got a photo shoot coming up this week. So be looking out for, for some exciting stuff coming up. But they put my logo on the front and the back. And it looks <laughs> terrible. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't know if you're coming or going, I guess. That, you know, like- That's right. That's right, but uh, okay, that's that's all the backward jokes I got to start here. Let's get let's get serious. Well, no, we're not getting serious today. No, uh, once again, serious this is today. this is Jim Cripps, the backward bowler. That's probably the probably I don't know if people know you uh, more by your name or by the backwards bowler, but either way, I know you're not worried about that. You're just do what you do in the bowling world. Um, since we've talked, anything else yeah, new? You talked a little bit about uh, some stuff coming out here. Yeah, absolutely. So I ended up doing several podcasts. I've got another one coming up. Uh, launching the first week of February. Um, they are doing a photo shoot this week for Bowler's Journal. So that'll be in the February edition as well. So pretty fired up and excited about that. That's uh, just, I, I don't even know how I, how I uh, deserve that, but uh, they're excited about it and so am I. So doing that, doing that photo shoot later this week or, or this coming week. And so I'm sure they'll be putting the finishing touches on that article, but uh, I was shocked and amazed at just how many people they reached out to. They asked for a list, and I, I gave them a pretty good list, and they said, well, do you have any more? And I gave them another list, and it looks like they've, they've reached out to just about everybody. So it's, it's uh, good stuff. It's exciting. Well, that's a good thing. And uh, a lot of people, when they get their first 300, uh, if it's been a while since they started in bowling, a lot of times they, they have uh, a second or a third one come quickly. Have you had any close calls yet? I have not, um, but it, I've you know I've been rolling pretty well here lately, and then just I've had a lot of side distractions just with uh, doing these podcasts and that type of stuff, <laughs> and had planned on jumping in there and doing some practice over at CTD and uh, seeing if I could get some some other games on on video, but just honestly have not had the time, and it's been for good reason. I mean, there's been these podcasts and uh, they. It's been interesting that several of them I go on and the podcast starts out about bowling and then they they dive into the business stuff and then the podcast ends up going twice as long as it was originally supposed to. So that's been fun. Well, I'm I'm getting texts already about uh, about you. One 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 text I got. Somebody wants to know. I, I'm not even going to ask, but the other one. But. <laughs> I've gotten some colorful ones over the years. Uh, I'm I'm sure this never gets old with you, right? And you've embraced it real well. I know there's, I'm sure there's a some sort of breaking point on the questions, but the the friend of mine wants to know why your hat isn't on backwards. It's just frowned upon. <laughs> I mean, that's a visor, right? And now that you lean down, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a visor. You don't wear a visor backward. Well, and you know, uh, Brian Graham and the guys over at Hammer, they've been great over the years. You know, they don't make bowling visors. That's, you know, that's not even a thing. Uh, I don't know that I've ever seen another visor on a, on a lane anywhere. And yeah. so I had these made a few years ago and, uh, you know, Hammer kind of agreed to, to give their nod and say, say, all right. So uh, I, I actually, I do need to touch base with Brian for uh, before the photo shoot this week and find out if, if he wants it in or out of the, of the photo. So, but uh no, I'm a I'm a visor guy through and through, which uh, you know is pretty rare out on the lanes. All right, well, I, Jim, I don't know if you can see the chat there, but uh, our producer, who happens to also be uh, Luke's wife, wants to personally thank you for your positivity last time. So, oh, and, and absolutely. I mean, I, I really and truly, if I was going to be negative, I don't I don't think um, I don't think I would be where I'm at today. Honestly, I mean, people don't like to be around negativity. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people can bandwagon on and and kind of go down that drain. But long term, people are just not geared toward negativity. It, it just doesn't. I mean, the news is about the only place that I didn't find that has long term success with negativity. I, I don't think I ever would have. Uh, it doesn't fit my personality. And, you know, just in general, you know, I, I had an interaction this past weekend with uh, the Las Cruces high school team 
Uh, Miss Peggy Nix put that together. She's their coach and had a great interaction. It's their first tournament that they had been to. I sent them a video just saying, hey, you got a great coach. She's the best cheerleader I've ever seen in the business. And uh, and she's also going to hold you accountable. So you guys get out there and, and kick some tail. And, you know, they sent me a picture from the lanes, them as a team and that kind of stuff. And and that just wouldn't happen if I if I had a negative attitude. So uh, thank you for for acknowledging that. But, uh, you know, I, I just wish I wish I could wish that on more people. Well, uh, I think that's probably uh, more of what I picked up from the, the interview that we had originally wasn't the fact that, you know, you did something that nobody else had done. That was cool and everything. But just the way you handle everything um and and obviously lots some negative stuff coming your way online i thought that was really impressive so uh, it happens, Luke, yeah, it happens every day but you know i get way more positive than i get negative and i think you i think it's all about what you put out in the world and i think if i was incredibly negative i'd probably get way more negative stuff all right jim as you know today we're just kind of checking in with people and rolling through a bunch of people here we got a a few guests in the queue so luke if you got anything for jim uh, let him know. If not, we'll let him uh, let him run. Yeah, I think uh, my my wife there is thanking you because it, it had a it had an impact on me, and so it's made me more pleasant to live with. Um, I uh, so it I mean yeah so it it no it it, re it really did uh, it really did make an impact because I've been kind of behind the eight ball, especially with bowling, but with a lot of stuff. I I tend to be a little bit naive, and so I always will go the extra step, go the extra mile, whatever else. I didn't start bowling until I was 19. And so yep. I didn't go to college. I didn't get a whole lot of the, uh, the networking or whatever else. Um, and I ended up getting into a pro shop and I was always working while everybody else was bowling. And so I didn't get to go to tournaments with people. I didn't get to make contacts with people. And so my whole bowling thing didn't really start until I was 35, just, you know, a, a few years ago, but even then it just feels like I put a whole bunch of time and, and, and effort and positivity and, and good, good will into things. And it just gets taken advantage of. And so it just, it's one of those things. It's like, gosh, I'm almost 42 and I don't feel like I have a whole lot to show for it. And it's like, well, between you saying things like you did and then uh, talking to Sandra a little bit earlier, you can use that to flip it around and inspire other people or, and sometimes it really doesn't matter what you get it matters more what you give and that can be kind of reward in itself. And so I do, I do really want to say thank you for what you, what you said when you were on with us a few weeks ago. No, that's, that's great. And and that's what keeps me going. I mean, if, uh, if, if I get nothing from bowling, it, it's just the interactions, it's the friendships, you know, I, I, I didn't start bowling until I was 21. So I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, you know, the high school and the college and, and, you know, youth leagues and all those things, uh, just never happened. And uh, I'm super excited right now because my son, because he was part of that 300 game, you know, if you've seen the the one that was uh, posted on Hammer site, just the, the one that shows the last couple of frames, he gives me a fist bump between the 11th and 12th ball. And he had no desire to be involved in bowling prior to that event. And now all of a sudden bowling is cool. And he starts, <laughs> he starts on the youth league in two weeks. So, uh, in fact, I've got a call or I, I got to send a message over to uh, uh, Ed Gallagher just to uh, see if he's got a spot to, to give Castle a few few pointers and get him get him get him started in the right way. So looking forward to that. And uh, guys, I, I just want to say thank you for for putting this out there, for having this show. And, you know, it's it's no small feat to, to put on a podcast. And uh, I know that uh, because I'm gearing up to launch my own. And, and there's, because you've been on so many here, especially recently. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I love it in that it's it's fun. You get to interact with people, but it, it's a lot of work. And and if if anybody out there thinks that it's not work, and that you guys have not uh, put a a lot of effort into even just lining up the shows, much less actually mm -hmm. being on, um, you know, that's I, I got to tell you, big big hats off to both of you, and and thank you from everybody here in bowling uh, because it is a lot of work, and so. Um, be proud that you guys had a great run and uh, you know, there's, there's people out here that are better for it. So thank you. Yeah. And if, if anybody, if anybody out there, I, I, I'll just throw this one yeah. tag for myself out there. I posted a video on my YouTube channel uh, yesterday 
And it's the best advice I can give to a lot of bowlers other than being positive. And that's um, if you're making money with bowling, meaning if you're, you know, if you did pretty well in league this year, you went to some tournaments, those types of things, you need to talk to your CPA about uh, is bowling a business for you so that you can write off all, of, all those things, your mileage, your travel, your meals, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I put that on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's youtube.com forward slash the backwards bowler. Uh, so I, I, as many of you can, please subscribe. But uh, that's the kind of content that I like to put out. I like to put out things. I do put some personal stuff out. Just, you know, uh, it snowed here recently in, in Tennessee. So out playing with uh, my son, Castle. But a lot of it is around bowling and business and, and really kind of how the two tie together. And a lot of you could be writing off thousands of dollars a year because of what you do in bowling and, you know, maybe haven't asked that question to your CPA. So please do so, so that, you know, you can do, continue to do bigger and better things. Yeah, definitely. All right, Jim. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and let you go here. we got about three or four people uh, in the Thanks, queue. Jeff. He might bowl backwards, but his mental attitude is, is way forwards more than anybody else. So Jim, you just keep doing what you're doing and uh, we'll keep watching and, and we appreciate the kind words, sir. Awesome. Thanks guys. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. All right, Jim Cripps, the backwards bowler, and now we're going to move right. forward to. Yeah, uh, we're, we're, I'm going to put, I'm gonna put Steve here. back in here and see if we've. Uh... Hopefully, you can hear me. Heck yeah! Hey, hey. all right, there four. There Problem solved. There was a little, uh, yeah. little lagging on my end there, so uh, if if we get off a little bit, we'll uh, we'll just work through it here. Steve, how you doing tonight, sir? Doing great, doing great. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you uh, inviting me on to uh, join the show, and I'm happy to be here. So. Well, absolutely. Like I was saying the, the first time, nobody's contributed as much as you. Uh, I've always been a big fan. you got a classic style, just like we were talking with Sandra Gongora there. Your style is is timeless. And, uh, you know, she talked about uh, being 40 soon, and, and you may or may not be over 50 now. So uh, your style yeah. is, is one of those that's going to last forever. But uh, the reason for having you on the show is, is just to thank you, first and foremost. Uh, you know, mm. there's only so many people you can have, so many guys that are bowling and, and the stuff that you added over the years and the things you've done for me, it, 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 there, there's really no other way to, you know, to say it, to, but thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. appreciate it. And uh, happy to help. It is, it is a, a story you've told a few times, but I definitely do uh, go back in my mind as well several <laughs> times too. And remember that, that moment as well too. And I, and I tell you, it's kind of wild because look at both of you guys uh, being able to throw the ball at that kind of a level with each hand. I don't, I have no idea how you do it. I, <laughs> You said my, my style is timeless, but you haven't seen me try it left-handed. <laughs> that, might, that might be the only thing that uh, I've got over a lot of bowlers. Because somebody will say, hey, how many 300s you got? And I'll tell them. And they'll say, well, I've got uh, you know, 5,300s. I'm like, well, how many you got with your other hand? <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Yeah. I'm like, well, that's all, I, that's all I can do. So, you know what, Steve? I am going to take a moment since uh, this is our show. and We've got four hours to do this. Uh, I do want to share this story. Any, anybody who hasn't heard, this will probably be the last time uh, on this venue, of course, that I'll, I'll get to tell this. But for those of you who haven't heard, originally uh, going back to 1999, and actually, I don't remember the venue. I remember where I got hurt, but I, I can't remember the next term. It might have been in Quorum or Latham, New York. I don't know if that sounds familiar to you or not. But it was on Long Island somewhere. Yeah. But I hurt myself at uh, Carroll Air Lanes in East Brunswick, New Jersey. North Brunswick? That doesn't matter to the story. <laughs> So anyway, um, I, I had called my wife back home and said, hey, I hurt my knee and I'm going to have to come home. And, and so I was planning on coming home. The next thing you knew, I was like, I wonder if I could bowl left handed. I just started bowling left handed a little bit, just kind of messing around. And I, I wondered if this was something that I could do. So I went to a, a local alley and I I grabbed uh, some some uh, grabbed my stuff and I went in there and I threw and it didn't hurt because it was on my my sliding leg when I bowled right-handed. So it wasn't, you know, there was no pain when I bowl left-handed. So I called back home. I said, Hey, I've already registered. I've already paid for these tournaments. So I don't, I just, you know, I'm so far away from home. I'm going to bowl a tournament left-handed. So then it hit me. I, I I've got a little problem here. <laughs> it's one thing to bowl left-handed with your stuff. It's a another thing to try to throw your right-handed equipment that is drilled completely backwards. Obviously your pitches are off and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, and back then, you know, you had guys like Tom Baker, yourself, whoever was, uh, you know, people weren't necessarily on staff. You know, you had, you know, one or two people on staff and they took care of the bowlers. 
that, that needed equipment. So what you did is you went to somebody and you asked for a comp slip. So I went up to you and, and me being kind of a schmuck at the time, I thought, hey, you know, Steve looks like a good mark. He seems like a nice guy. So I went up to Steve and I said, hey, um, here's my plight. Is there any possibility that you can uh, get me a comp slip because I'd like to bowl uh, um, this next upcoming tournament left handed? And, and, and you started writing and I thought, well, he's doing a lot of writing here for a comp slip. And the next thing I know, you handed me three. And you said, here's three. You're going to need one for the A squad, uh, one for B squad, and you're going to need a spare ball. And and I didn't even know what to say at the time. I, and my jaw hit the floor. And I was like, he, he not only thought ahead of what I would need, he, he took care of it. And it wasn't like I was Pete Weber or whoever at the time. And, and that's that's something that lives with you forever. And that's that's when I first started with this show, I thought, man, I really want to get Storm involved. And then when I was able to get on storm staff at that time. It was just the perfect fit. And, and that's, that's the story. And that's, that's a true story. And I'll never forget that. Yeah, that's a, no, it's a great story. Thanks for sharing. And, you know, one of the things when you mentioned there, when you're talking about that was, you know, at the time, and you know how our line is, is broken up at storm, how we have premier line, master line, right? Signature and thunder and such. And that was our entire, our catalog for the following year. We actually had a featured national staff player, uh, for each line. So we had Pete Weber was our, our premier line guy. Then we had some other players like Brian Himmler, uh, Dennis Haran, and our entire national staff at the time fit for those seven different lines that we had. So like you mentioned back then, yeah, we had seven staff players uh, and then we had some other equipment and stuff on there, but it was a matter of getting a comp slip from, you know, whoever the tour rep was at the time. And you know, things have definitely changed, uh, you know, greatly as far as staff and that stuff goes on the PBA tour. Um, but yeah, you're right. That That's one of those uh, kind of classic stories that I think we, uh, you and me both will, will always remember that. Yeah, I don't think people realize it wasn't that long before that, that time. I, I worked at a wholesale bowling supply here in town called Anchorman Sales with Kenny Lytle, who you may, may yes, not remember. Yes, I, I know Kenny. Yeah, I yeah. remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kenny, peace, unfortunately... Man. Yeah, unfortunately passed away here. He's one of, my, yeah. one of my best friends in the bowling world. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I remember discussing with Kenny, we, people were talking about coming out with a bowling ball at Christmas and people didn't realize, you know, at that time, or people don't realize now at that time, the balls came out when the catalog came out and that was it for the year. There was no release uh, until somebody came up with the idea, hey, let's let's bring out a Christmas ball. And this, you know, maybe let's see if we can sell it. And can, I remember talking with Kenny thinking, yeah, that, that'd probably work. And then, of course, now it's, you know, the every other every other week there's a new ball. And, uh, you know, that's just how it's changed over the years. But yeah. um, that that's, uh, you know, that's that's something uh, that people, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of old school on a lot of things. And I, 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 don't, I, think, I think nowadays it's just, it, it's really cool that there's so much. But it just reminds me of the day when, you know, back in the day when they came yeah. out, when the catalog came out, we did the catalogs in the summer, the, and at the start of the fall season, the balls came out and that, that was it. You ordered out of the catalog. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bowling's definitely changed. I mean, a lot over the years since, since I was tour repping and since you were bowling out there on tour, um, a lot of things I think have changed for the better, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of, of big improvements and changes. I mean, we, we never even saw a two-handed bowler when, when I was tour repping, right? back then. I mean, we hadn't seen one yet. Oscu had, hadn't made the show yet at the U S open and Jason uh, Belmonte had not uh, emerged. And it, it was, uh, you know, it was a, a breakthrough technique. And now you watch the team trials, uh, for example, right now, and look at how many two handers, you know, are in the sport. Right. So yeah, there's been a, a big evolution in our sport, not just on the you know equipment side, but also on the players and technique and, you know, as far as the amount of power uh, that these these younger players create now is is pretty incredible and phenomenal in my mind. So, uh, but and who would have imagined back then too that we'd be sitting here chatting live with our cameras and, and our audio working now, which is a nice thing too, right? Uh, so <laughs> that we'd be sitting here uh, doing this back in 1999 before we had uh, you know almost a decade uh, really before YouTube uh, and before we started to. Uh, to have this kind of a technology. So I think this is great. And, and uh, like you said, I think it was expressed a little bit uh, earlier as well too, but I mean, what a cool thing uh, that you guys have done, right? I mean, this is something you guys can celebrate on a great achievement and uh, 
I know this kind of stuff takes a lot of work and takes a lot of effort to put on. Um, and this is, like I say, the end of this era, but it doesn't mean you guys aren't going to be back on to something uh, bigger and better down the road. And I just wanted to make sure I thank you guys for the work and support you have done for the bowling industry, right? This is this stuff takes a lot of work and effort, doesn't happen on its own. And uh, but regardless of this being the last show for this, that doesn't mean this, this can't just be a stepping stone to the next thing. Well, thank you very much for those kind words, Steve. When, when this show started in 2014, it was just a 20-minute segment on a, another sports show that I was doing here, uh, actually on the radio at the time. And I never thought that it would grow to way it, the way it did. It, it grew into, uh, I had a two-hour sports show, and it grew into we had to use a full hour for the show. And then, of course, that, I, that wasn't long enough after that, and we had, ended up having to spawn off a separate show. So... Uh, I, I'm proud of the work that, that I've done over the years on the show. Um, I appreciate Luke coming on here for this year. Uh, the video format obviously is different than radio, and, and I really love what we, we can do here on the screen and stuff. But uh, I appreciate you coming on here. We've got a ton of people in the queue. Steve, thank you for uh, working through your technical stuff there. That's a always fun part of this show. We've had, I could tell you some really good stories, especially on the radio back in the day, but uh, as far as connecting with people. But Steve, thank you for everything you do in the bowling world, and thanks for the kind words once again. Thanks, Waz, and thanks, Luke. Appreciate you guys, and I look forward to watching the rest of the show. You guys have, have uh, done a great thing for bowling, so you guys should be proud. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That was Steve Steve Klempkin. He holds many hats at Storm, and he also writes our paychecks. Luke, uh, obviously, we're just kidding about that. Yeah. <laughs> but Steve has always been there for me, obviously, from day one in 1999, so... Uh, he's still here. He's still supporting us. And he's still supporting the show, and and those words mean a lot. So, Luke, why don't you uh, why don't you introduce our next guest? All right. So I think we got Mr. Aaron Smith coming up now. Never heard of him. Oh, there he is. That Aaron Smith. Okay, there he is. Never heard of Hi, him either. Aaron. The other guy. Who's that? <laughs> well, welcome. To, yeah, you are known as the other guy. I think I put that in the post. I was like. Uh, I thank Matt for his time and, and over the years. I'm like, oh yeah, thanks, thanks to Aaron for cleaning up Matt's mess afterwards. Also, mm -hmm. uh, it's all team effort. So it's great <laughs> now to Matt see you guys. Is, uh, Matt's not going to be able to make it today, uh, so you and I will be able to talk as freely as we want about him. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, I, I I learned from my time last year on site how much 20 minutes means to you guys and uh, how much 20 minutes means to our show a lot of nights and how, how much that content uh, means. So thank you very much for, for uh, taking, taking over the reins and, uh, and, and allowing us to invade your territory for 20 minutes on Sunday night every night. Of course. Uh, you know, there's, uh, I think I could speak for Matt on this as well, is that, you know, there are a few things we love talking more about than bowling. And, you know, specifically the Open Championships has meant a lot to uh to both of us over the years and uh, being able to uh, represent that tournament and be able to talk about that tournament and all the great bowlers uh, that come through there that participate that, uh, you know, make a run at an Eagle, make a run at a 300 game, uh, you know, and, you know, participation milestones as well. You were there uh, this year for Clancy Mueller for 100,000 pins. Uh, I think you got 25 years somehow. So look at you go, Waz. Way to be, man. Way to be. I'll uh, be, uh... It, 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 it's, I mean, it, it's, it's, the greatest thing in the world. So like it's uh, for you mentioned the long days and the time and all that. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a pretty cool th thing to get to. You get to say you get to do and hang out in bowling centers with, uh, you know, the best bowlers, all the bowlers. Everyone comes and sees you. It's uh, it's pretty awesome. So very, very fortunate for the opportunities over the year. And, uh, you know, getting to talk about it is just a bonus on our side. So. You know, those positive moments outweigh all the all the negatives right there. Matt used to always talk about you know, a lot of the work and everything that was going on and he'd feel down or something. Then somebody come in and he'd get a letter or he'd get a, a note from somebody, a, a message online saying, Hey, uh, you know, thank you so much for putting my, my husband or whoever's story on there. You know, it just, it just made our day. It's so awesome. And, and those are the things out there, you know, I, when I was out there uh, seeing Bob Hart and, and even last year with Clancy going over a hundred thousand, uh, those moments, you know, th those are why we're in this business. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been so fun to see those. And, you know, the big one coming up, obviously, uh, this season, we're looking ahead to uh, Glenn Allison, uh, you know, getting closer to the pinfall record and, and bowling in his 71st Open Championships. Uh, I got to be there when Bill Lillard 
uh, set the pinfall record. And that's still, uh, you know, to this day, 2015 El Paso, uh, just everything about that moment still, you know, gives gives me goosebumps after all these years uh, to, to see that happen, to see his interaction, to see uh, he, the first thing he wanted to do after he got that strike was, uh, uh, yes, where's my lovely wife at? And then all of a sudden uh, she came up there and, you know, big hug. Uh, yeah, just just get goosebumps even thinking about, you know, those moments and getting to be a part of that. And, you know, that's, uh, you know, what we do. We get to tell the history of the sport uh, as as things happen, as these magical moments uh, of throwing a round ball at wooden sticks happens. Uh, <laughs> but it, 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 it's so much more magical, especially in getting to know, uh, you know, how much it means to people and uh, to let them have their moment like that is, is uh, always very special. Yeah, I hope you're around when uh, I break the 100,000 pin barrier, which if I bowl every year, just doing some rudimentary math in my head, it'll be about 95. I think I'm at, I don't know, I let's see, 25 years and it, 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 probably 1,700 a year. I hate to even say that out loud. So uh, I got a little ways to go, probably two and a half times that. So uh, uh, you're 60, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to make that. But those those moments are fun. It was fun last year watching the whole bowling alley stop. And uh you know, for Clancy's hundred thousand, um, Aaron. Since uh, we're not going to talk to you uh, ever again in this venue, um, uh, just tell tell people what you do real quick and and what 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 you're uh, what you're doing here now that the Open Championships aren't going, or how you're preparing for this year. Absolutely. Uh, well, my role with the USBC is um, communications manager. Uh, so we handle a lot of the the PR that comes through the press releases that go out, event coverage, and putting together a lot of the stuff uh, that you see at the tournaments. Uh, you know, one of the things I've been working on, actually just wrapped up uh, this past week, was uh, wrapping up all the content for the program book at the Open Championships. So, uh, you know, throughout the course of the off season, if you will, from being at the tournament, a lot of it is preparing for the next round of tournaments and getting ahead of things, looking, uh, you know, at all the signage, all the forms all the bracket forms that you know just kind of little everything that kind of comes through our department touches in a way um so you know a lot of it is uh sitting behind a desk writing uh proofing a lot of stuff definitely a lot of proofing stuff uh but we get to do you know that along with you know the opportunity to travel to some events here and there as well for more event coverage uh i was more on the bull tv side in the past i'm still still wearing the uh the uh, pullover right now, but uh, you know you're probably going to see me less on that in the uh, in the coming year. But uh, Jason Thomas and his team are going to have a lot of uh, great folks, as you've already seen from the uh, the RPI out at uh, at in Las Vegas at South Point and uh, team trials with Emil Williams Jr. and Craig Elliott and a bunch of great folks are going to be out there throughout the course of the year bringing bringing you the action of Bull TV. Uh, I'm going to be in Reno like almost every day. Uh, outside of uh, two small trips, uh, also be overseeing the women's championships, which is taking place in Las Vegas. But Reno's going to be my home. Uh, leaving in about a month, uh, it's going to be right around uh, Valentine's Day. Heading out, uh, and then there till basically August. The tournament ends on July 24th. It usually takes about uh, one week to kind of kind of get everything ready and to you know move on to the next one, if you will. Uh, so probably won't be home until August. But Reno is the greatest place in the world, and you can't convince me otherwise despite how much everyone tries to. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Timmy P. I know Timmy like P. is it. out there watching right now, so I'm, I'm going to single him out on this specifically. But uh, uh, You can, but yeah, you can no, say I, his last name. It's okay. <laughs> we don't <but>, know. Uh, <laughs> well, see, I don't need to say the last name. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but I'm, 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 I, I enjoy the opportunity to take in the city. You know, Vegas is, uh, you know, getting to live in Vegas, uh Syracuse a couple of years ago, El Paso, all these places, uh, great host. And uh, I'm looking forward to it just because I haven't lived in Reno now for uh, 2014 was the last time mm -hmm. for me. So uh, definitely, definitely a lot has changed, not just inside the venue at the NBS, uh, but the surrounding area. So if you're someone who sticks to, you know, the row with uh, Circus Circus, Silver Legacy, El Dorado, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of great options there, but uh, don't you know, be too scared to make your way out to other things. See, see Midtown, see uh, the mighty Truckee River right there and all the things that popped up over there. Uh, Matt and I actually used to take, you know, yearly trips to Reno for non-bowling purposes. So, you, and that happens, folks. You can go to Reno for non-bowling purposes and have a good time. I swear, I swear you can have a good time. But uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we've seen the city grow over the past couple of years while the tournament hasn't been there. Uh, so we're excited for the bowlers to kind of kind of get to see everything uh that we've kind of seen come up over the past uh you know it's been 
basically 60 years now since uh, since the OC Bowlers have been there. So uh, I'm excited for it. Uh, definitely uh, going to be a, a big change for everything, but uh, excited for the opportunity, the challenge. We got the team set, so we're uh, we're looking forward to uh, March 4th and uh, 143 straight days, I believe. So. All right. Well, you're going to have to do it uh, on your own this year. I won't be able to help. I was told there was no hot dog cart, so I will be taking this year off. Uh, you'll have to uh, you'll have to take care of that. But uh, Aaron, we got a ton of people here in the queue. I just want to take a moment and thank you once again for coming on and uh, coming on it. Uh, you know, every week for for as long as you did, it it really adds a lot to the show, especially with the updates uh, from Reno. You you won't find any argument from Luke and I. We both love Reno, so. Uh, yeah. We will see you sometime this year. I'm not sure when Luke's going. I'm not sure where I'm going. My team <laughs> is going on Memorial Day weekend this year, so I'm going to be uh, going with somebody else at some point. So, anyway, Aaron, thank you very much for your time once again, and thank you for your contributions to the show over the years. Well, uh, big thanks to you guys as well. And, you know, just uh, since I've logged on, seen Jim and Steve as well, and, uh, you know, they're great ambassadors for the for the sport of bowling. And uh, excited to see what the rest of the show looks like for you guys. And obviously a big congratulations to both of you as well for uh, everything with the Bowler Show. It's It's been fun to be a part of, um, you know, off and on over the years. And uh, just everything you guys do for the sport is uh, highly appreciated. Uh, so just want to, you know, everything from our side obviously we're, we're we're big fans of the show and being part of it um so just best of luck to you guys down the road but uh look forward to uh still keeping keeping track with you on uh on social media along the way and uh you know obviously uh hopefully at the open championships as well and uh we'll get to uh get to toast some hot dogs the next time we can so uh but until then thank you so much for having me on guys and uh, uh best wishes to you all right aaron thank you very much once again that's the news for now is a uh... A famous man once said, so you take care. Well, we'll catch up with you soon. Take care, guys. All right. Re revolving carousel of guests here, Luke. Keep, keep them coming. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, to interject here for a second, that's kind of the, I guess, one of the, the cool things, I guess, about not doing the show anymore is that we're kind of just too busy to do it with bowling stuff, mm -hmm. mostly. I mean, you guys have got the, the tournaments, or, I mean, you can't, you can't put out enough tournaments for people to show up to. And um, I've, I've got my own thing, you know, that, that, that annoying kind of pesky job that gets in the way of all the, uh, the YouTube activity oh, right. on my end. But uh, yeah, so it's, while it's sad that the show's ending, it's ending because we're, we've got big enough things and we're busy enough within bowling period that it's just a little, <laughs> it's just a little bit too much. So uh, we got uh, Mr. Mr. 900 that we're going to pull in here. Next, Mr. Stephen Casella. There he is What's right up, there, guys? Stephen. Welcome back to the show here. We're going to uh, just, uh, just got a couple of minutes here for you. want to check in with you and we, we appreciate you uh, spending some time with us. And of course, anybody who has an achievement like yours is, is always welcome on the Bowler Show, of course. How you doing, guys? Uh, first of all, sorry to see you guys go. Um, it's a good show. Uh, there's nothing that like it right now. So uh, it, yeah, it's going to be a loss for um, um, Sunday night. But um, you guys are always always here, here and there. So you guys. Well, you got some, uh, you got some cool stuff there behind you. I like, I like. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're in a man cave or what, there. I'm looking at the Kingpin yeah. poster. And yeah, I'm in my, I'm in my basement. Kingpin, Kingpin poster. Um, when that movie was filmed, it was filmed at a bunch of, me. and so I got that from from when they filmed the movie itself. Uh, the alley that I pulled that was was the Beaver Valley Bowl, and that was the one where. where and the ball return. So uh, <laughs> that place recently closed down a few. Uh, and those are some some, some of my rings uh, from bowling. So, you know, Sylvia, once again, the picture here, obviously. <laughs> but well, Luke, uh, uh, go ahead. No, Luke, Luke occasionally has a, uh, he's got some dogs there that, that make appearances at the end of the show, yeah. Storm Dog and a couple others. So Yeah, dogs are always welcome. Absolutely. So uh, real quick, before we let you go, I know we're just kind of checking in with everybody, but 
Uh, how, how's bowling been since the 900? Is it, is it, have you gotten anything close? Obviously you're probably not going to do that again, but, uh, um, I shot a few eights, uh, five or six, 300 games, but, uh, nothing close to 900. Uh, a friend of mine, he just broke a, um, house a record, uh, uh, last shot 866. So, uh, every time somebody shoots something big, they always shoot me a text later on, you know, like a I almost beat you or whatever. And, uh, I mean, it's always fun. So, but, uh, no, um, everybody's just been great throughout the whole thing. I mean, it's going to be a year in March that, uh, uh, that I did it. And, uh, uh, um, it was just a crazy year last year and, and it was just a wild ride for sure. I can only imagine. I, I'm sure you get jokes, you know, when you spare in the first, uh, frame of the night, people are, oh, uh, I, yeah, uh, three hundred game game. The uh, first first game, if if I throw like, like first nine, I mess up in the tag. I suck. So, you know, <laughs> that's, that's just I just learned learned to deal with it. So. But you know what was uh, uh, getting back to something you said earlier about the uh, bowling balls you have in the catalog. I, I I remember going to the bookstore and, and having to buy a digest to actually see what what bowling balls were coming out <laughs> and uh your dad returned on the, the tour on saturday and he saw what the, so that's how i got to uh see what new bowling balls were coming out yep the good old days that's uh that's the way it was back in our day so or back in my day i don't know how old you are but um so about a month and a half or something's coming out so it's, <laughs> it's really changed that's for sure yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we, we appreciate, we appreciate you coming on here. I know, um, the, the achievement you had, you know, it, it definitely, you're, you're, you're more than deserving of coming on the show. You know, we have, we have fun with a lot of our guests, but, uh, the 900 thing is just so special. There's only so many people who ever have achieved that. So, uh, congratulations on that once again, and thanks for spending time here with us and, and, and letting people, uh, walking people through it last time. That was really, really fun. Yeah. I want one last thing, I want to thank um, I am Bowling and and also Turbo Grips. They've been um, uh, they've been such such great. great and I couldn't ask for for better people to deal with. Yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll try to get Ken Keegan on here later. I don't think he's going to be able to make it, but uh, a lot of people have no idea how much he's given back to bowling, and and I'll always appreciate him. So Brian Cooper also he's he's been a huge help. So. He's a he's a, a silent guy who does all the hard work there. So, you know what? I could call there any time of day, and he, he's just he's like a one one man show over there. I call it so. <laughs> but everybody else, I show grip. I, I, they just been unbelievable. So, all right, Steve. Well, you have a great night, and uh, can keep doing what you're doing in the bowling world, sir. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks. All right, Luke. Revolve yeah. them in. One in, one yeah. out. We got Maddie McConnor score next. Never, never heard of him. There he is, right there. The one, the only Matt McNeil. Matt, you were with us in the original years. You were the original Matt Canazaro. A lot of people don't know that. It's a good trivia question. You and I are always doing trivia. Uh, we that needs to be a trivia question. Who was the who had Canazaro's corner before it was Canazaro's corner? Of course, that was you. That's right. Yeah, I remember uh, giving you the uh, the weekly updates from the MBS. So yeah, that was a uh, that was like ten years ago already. Man, I've, <laughs> all I've all I've done is grow some gray hairs and and increase my <laughs> weight size since then. I haven't done much much of anything positive except for appear on this show. So I just wanted to. Uh, Hoist a glass for you guys and uh, Waz. Thanks so much for everything you did for the sport of bowling and the bowling community. So uh, this one's for you guys. Cheers. Absolutely, I appreciate you saying that, Matt. And you you were integral to start. You were you were given lessons that year. Our our team did a team lesson, and uh, you you helped us out. And we I don't I, I'll bring this up. I'm sure you had a million people, but we had a guy on our team who, who was kind of sitting back in the corner. And you got to him. You were looking at everybody's balls, and you were saying, "Hey, uh, this you need this ball. You need to put this surface on this ball." And 
one of our bowlers was hiding around. You're like, hey, where's your stuff? And he's like, well, I didn't bring any. And this is a guy who we practiced for weeks with with his stuff, and then he decided it was too much of a challenge for him to bring his own stuff out, and he had an interchangeable thumb, so he just threw a, another guy's stuff. So uh, I don't even know if you would even remember that, but uh, that was one of the funny things. I'm sure you've gone through a, a, a lot there when, when you were giving lessons out there, but – that's uh, that's always stuck in my head. I still give that guy trouble for not uh, bringing the stuff. But I remember you coming on many times. We had we had we had good times on the show. Um, we did a lot of trivia too. That was always our, our thing at the end. I'll, I'll try to come up with a good one here uh, before we let you go at the end. So, yeah, those were the good old days. Uh, that was always a lot of fun because I remember I'd, I'd I'd be spending a lot of time back in the office with Matt Canazero and trying to get you know who was the you know the movers and the shakers and the you know, and, and people who are uh, putting up some big scores and teams and doubles pairings and all events and the whole work. So it was it was actually a lot of fun. I, I you know, and uh, just helped me build more of a bond too with uh, Mr. Canazero and uh, Mr. Smith and all those guys. It was uh, those were those were really the good old days. We didn't know we were living our good old days then, but. <laughs> They were the good old days. <laughs> you, uh, you've got a long way to go. You, uh, you're, you're still adding eagles. It, 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 you know, for you, it'd been a little bit of a drought, but uh, you, you captured another one. So, uh, and I would imagine it's not going to be the last. Yeah, knock on wood. I, uh, I, I hope not. But you know what? If if it is, uh, I'm pretty dang happy with with that one. If that one's the last one, I'm pretty darn happy with that one being the last one. I don't. I just couldn't say enough about uh, winning with a group of guys, man. It's just, it's real, real special. It really is. And nothing can, I'll, I'll take, I'll take winning a team tournament over a singles tournament any day of the week, twice on Sunday. <laughs> so yeah. Now a lot of people know you're with Storm, but they, they may not know exactly what you do. Take, take a moment and tell us what you do for Storm Bowling right now. Well, right now I'm actually, uh, I've been transitioned. I'm not doing the tours anymore. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm kind of in a state of flux at, at Storm. They really haven't announced what my new position is, so I don't want to take the words out of their mouths. Um, but I'm going to be uh, doing more on the marketing team. Um, I'm doing a little product development. And no, no, I'm not making bowling balls. Although left-handers do make really good bowling balls. I'm just going to say Mo Pinnell, Hank Boomershine, Ray Edwards, all three left-handers who've made some really, really good bowling balls. Um, so I'm not making ball balls, but uh, just starting to do some stuff on on uh, with the product development and very, dabbling a little bit there. So they're 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 shifting me around a little bit at at SPI, and so just trying to uh, you know use me to to whatever. Uh, you know, fits the bill, whatever they need. And that's kind of, you know, when I signed on, I was going to be the utility guy, you know, and so they had kind of a gap to fill on tour for a while. I filled that gap and now they've hired Eric Kraus. They have uh, Sean Ryan, they have Steve Jacobs, uh, they have Jim Callahan. So they got, they put together a really, really good team and those guys click really well together and they do a great job for the players and they service the players very, very well. And uh, they're very, very smart people. So, uh, you know, now that there's no longer really a need there, um, you know, now I'm kind of uh, shifty, shift in shift again. So we'll we'll see where the wind takes me. But it's it's very exciting. I'm just the luckiest guy in the world to get to work for uh, the Chrismans and and under uh, the leadership team that's at SPI. It's it's pretty pretty amazing place. All right. Well, we'll stay with tradition, Matt. Here, as we let you go, I'll I'll give you a trivia question here. It's it's a repeat question, but I think that we'll stay in tradition that way too. So, um, when Mark Roth made the seven ten on TV, everybody knows the the situation. He was in the ninth frame. He needed it. He had half pocket. Uh, he stunned the announcers. He also stunned his opponent in that match. Can you name that opponent? Yeah, it was Bill Straub, and the only person who did not clap or stand up in that building, much less it could even have been the city or the county, okay, was Bill Straub. Okay, so no offense to Bill, but you didn't stand up for the great ones making the first 710 on live television. Now, even if I was getting beat, I think I would have 
stood up and acknowledged that, but that's just me. I try to be a pretty nice guy and that's probably why I don't fit in very well on tour. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that he, that was Mr. Bill Straub. And that's a, that's a great answer. And that's always something that, uh, you know, even back then, you know, you keep your game face on, you don't want to give anything away, but when the guy makes the seven ten for the first time on TV, I think I've got to put my hand out or something, but boy, he stayed, he stayed in the moment. And, uh, uh, you know, that's something that's always struck me about that video, but Matt, we got some other people here, all kinds of people here waiting in the queue. I just want to thank you personally again. Uh, it's, it's kind of shocking. It's been that long since you were out there giving lessons and you were coming on the show, but, uh, that, that time was very special because it, it added a lot to the show. And as I said, it paved the way for Canazaro and his three or four year reign of terror. And, uh, he's, He's checked in here also and uh, thank, thanked us and thank you and, and for being a part of the show. So uh, I want to I want to just take a moment again uh, and thank you for coming on. Thank you for what you're doing for bowling and for Storm right now. Hey, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, congratulations on a, on a great run. Cheers. And uh, uh, I'm sure we'll cross paths sometime down the road. But have a great one. And thanks for uh, always having me on the show, Was Appreciate it. Absolutely, Matt. Thank you very much. All right, Luke. That was Mac McNeil. He's always been, uh, he's all, always been there for us on the show. That looked like uh, Craig Elliott cameo. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I went to uh, tab Matty out, and he uh, took care of it himself. And so I clicked something different. But yeah, Mister uh, Mister Elliott is uh, ready and waiting in the wings here. So. Okay. Do you have? Do you have? Is Jeff Riggles in there yet? No, Jeff is not. Okay. Jeffrey if, is not in here yet. Okay. Well, we'll get him in. He said he needed to be on. Uh, before seven because of his beloved Packers coming on here soon. So <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, we I did, I do have a few dollars on his Packers tonight. So <laughs> I would, uh, they don't start, they don't start until seven sixteen. So he, okay. he's got 20 minutes. I don't want to hear it. All right. Well, we got a preview of uh, one of the best looking guys, the guy who's always smiling in the bowling business, Craig Elliott. And let's, let's get him on here. There he is. <laughs> How you doing guys? Hey, Craig, uh, tell us uh, real quick. Tell us what uh, what you just finished up with here. Uh, well, I'll talk even longer because I don't care about Riggs Packers because they're playing on Lions. So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. So sorry, oh, gosh, Riggs. I have, sorry. I... <laughs> um, but but thank you also for not having me follow Aaron Smith as I tried to fill his shoes all the state trials, which was just an amazing event. Uh, my first time out there, and it was pretty cool to see people uh, of the USA there last night as we wrapped up the show after seven days in Vegas. Not making me follow Aaron Smith yet again in this week. <laughs> well, I I, I want to give you a personal thank you because uh, we did a couple of streams together. And we did one for at PBA Extra Frame, and you know I, I didn't expect it to be like your your normal. Uh, boss employee relationship, but you, you kind of just let me go and, and do my thing. And, and uh, I had a couple of, of ideas that I thought would help. And, and you just, you just let me go with it. And you never, you know, you never told me what to say, what not to say. And I'm pretty, pretty good at being cognizant of what I can and can't say, but um, I, I, you know, always remember that time. It was fun. Um, we did have somebody call into the bowling center and tell us to quit talking about ping pong, but that's, uh, that's not how you and I roll. <laughs> We're at the Lucy, and we had someone calling to complain that we were talking about not bowling activities, and that was the last time that's happened to us on air, unfortunately. But hey, we got to have a good time. We got and just enjoy the show because there's some long days, as you know. You sat through quite a few of those broadcasts, and you can't talk about bowling all the time. That's what the bowler shows for. Exactly. I mean, how many, how many times can you describe uh, this this guy just flat tend or uh, the lanes are transitioning and, and or whatever. But, you know, uh, you also had me down in, in Longview, Texas for the oil capital or not oil capital doubles, the Longview doubles. And uh, you were bowling that time. So I had a couple of segments uh, to my own and, and you just let me go. And, and I appreciate you know, I just appreciate the, the way you handled that. You know, you never you never worried about it. And you you uh, a lot of people may or may not realize. I believe it was called Michigan Bowler TV originally, uh, and then you you know you've been all around that area, and uh, getting your foot in the door and doing some great job with the streams. And then uh, now look at you right now doing USA Team Trials. That's got to be a cool feeling. Yeah, you know I'm in between 
flights on the way home tonight, but listening to some of the, the show here, sitting uh, here in the time, I think I was on the show, show it was Michigan Bowl or TV. I just got done doing the Proprietors Cup, because I'm driving home uh, um, uh, from Beaver View, and, and actually we were, we were talking for so long, halfway to Indianapolis before I realized I was not going the right direction. So <laughs> we gas there was. Uh, that's uh, that's funny. Yeah, we, you know, we've, we've talked now for times throughout the year, whether it's on a stream or on your or your various shows. Or thank you for all you guys have done. We all appreciate it here in the bowling world. And uh, cheers um, for you, Oz, and for Luke. All right. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I know you're busy, Craig, and I know you're, you're in between flights. I appreciate you taking some time here uh, in between those and, uh, you just keep doing what you're doing. There's a, you know, a lot of people out there that, uh, in our, in our bowling community do great things. There's a few that are, that are negative. You've always been positive about stuff and, uh, the stuff you do, uh, is invaluable. A lot of people don't, you know, they have no idea. Like I said, the, I think it was 33 hours we had spent, uh, at the Lucy and we we're all hour on hour 32 of explaining how somebody left a flat tent or who's leading or whatever <laughs> when we talking about the Olympics. And uh, that's always so, our but, challenge on the stream, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. People, I think people, I, I tune in sometimes. I'm like, man, these guys, you know, they're not even talking, you know, they, they take off and that's something, uh, you know, you or I never did. We kept, we kept it going. We might take a mini break in between games and that was it. But we kept people engaged on the air. And I, I'll always remember that. We, we try for sure. All right, Craig. Well, thanks for checking in with us. You uh, you have safe travel, sir. And once again, thanks for all you've done here uh, for the Bowler Show, and thanks for what you're doing for bowling. Hey, and real quick, Boz, and hey, let's let's wave the white flag for one last uh, show here on the Bowler Show. Thanks Absolutely. You, I wish I I don't have a flag, but uh, I'll explain to people what that means here as as you uh, as you fade away here, Craig. You have safe travel, sir. We'll see you soon. All right. Appreciate it. All right, Luke. The white flag uh, is uh, Craig's signature call when they're in the la going into the last game of qualifying, last game of uh, match play, whatever. He would always say, uh, "It's time to wave the white flag." And I kind of picked that up and uh, would have some fun with him on the streams when we were together, or when I was just commenting on a stream he was doing in the chat. So that's what uh, waving the white flag is. So uh, speaking of waving the white flag, we're two hours in here. That, that went pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're going to stay on here as long as uh, we have people Sailing. clicking into the queue. And yeah. uh, I think we still have uh, a couple in there. Has Riggs made it in yet, or is he still? Uh... No, nope, I haven't seen Riggs. Uh, Mr. Barta is communicating with me at the moment. He's going to hop in here. I've got uh, I've got a screen for Mr. Duke in here, but I don't have a, a video feed. So, Who was that for now? Mr. Duke. Oh, so yeah, he's a uh, he's got a camera in here, but okay. Well, we'll keep working on that. I was sure we're there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Barta is attempting to join. So, <laughs> you know, he attempts a lot of things. Uh, uh, there's there's Mr. Riggles. All right, let's bring him in right now. Yeah, the man, the myth, the legend, the man who's. Uh, uh, yeah. Go pack go, I guess would be his hashtag yeah. right now. And I, we I'm, got 16 minutes. I apologize. I have been sitting here and I have to use my work computer because my desktop does not have a uh, a camera. And um, I had the, the fire or our uh, VPN on and it was blocking mm -hmm. me. And then all of a sudden a notice came up about <laughs> firewall or whatever. And so I turned the VPN off and boom, there I am. So I've been sitting here for 15 minutes going, oh, what? No. sorry, my bad. No, that's all right. We were talking to, he mentioned you had to get on before the Packers game. And then I was talking about, uh, I have some money on the Packers tonight. And then uh, Craig Elliott was, is, is unfortunately a Lions fan. So <laughs> yeah, that's bad for him. <laughs> Historically, that doesn't, I'm not saying tonight. Would not surprise me if the Lions won tonight. Yeah, I'm the guy that bet under on the Packers win total this year and won yeah. that bet like two months ago. Basically. Yeah, well, my, my condolences because uh, <laughs> my, my betting history is I, I worry about putting $5 on somebody. So if, <laughs> if there was ever a night for, 
for Aaron Rodgers to throw like 137 <laughs> yards and three interceptions. It would be tonight. So hey, Susie, I got to tell you before we get to bowling, Susie had the game last week where the pitchy pitchy woo woo. She was on the wrong side of that and lost that at the Illinois Mississippi State game. Today yeah. she had the Jets. Uh and the pitchy pitchy woo woo cost her that. So she's the first batter in history to lose two games on pitchy pitchy woo woos on the final play of a game, I think. <laughs> I saw that score come up. I, I thought, well, I saw him kick the field goal and I thought, well, this, you know, it's gonna end and the Jets are gonna cover and uh, you know, that's going to be one of those that um, Scott Van Pelt's going to cover, I'm sure. That's uh, yes. another crazy bad beat. Oh, and, what you know, a bunch sorry, of sorry, Susie, if you're in the in the listening She's range. He's cooking gumbo there. right now. That's our Packer uh, food for tonight. All right. Well, I know you don't have a whole lot of time, Jeff, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave the Packers out of it for a while. They're going to be fine tonight <laughs> against the Lions. Um, uh, seriously, though, uh, it's you know, you were one of the guys with us originally. And you were always available. Somebody might back out. You know, you you were there to come on. And uh, we just want to take a moment and thank you for your contributions over the year and always being there when we needed you. Well, I always wanted to help your show out because, you know, you guys were the ones that took your time out on Sunday nights, which to me was always a key because you were getting the fresh stuff. In fact, sometimes you'd have someone on before any – basically you were the first person to tell the world who won especially going back a few years before things were quite as connected as they are now. So yeah. I always appreciated that as, you know, where you could hear whether if something wasn't going on, I'd listen live just cause I'd be like, okay, I'd, I'm getting the first news yeah. of the first comments from somebody who won a regional or a tour stop or whatever it might have been. And uh, I think I, I uh, stole some comments at sometimes some quotes from you guys for my stories over the years. So Always, it was fun to have that on Sunday night. And if I didn't listen to it Sunday night, it was always like first thing Monday morning at work. I when I got a chance, I was listening to the audio. Yeah, I was lucky, I and mean, we've talked about this today a couple of times. With that, uh, you know, Tom Clark even would would talk to whoever won that day uh, back when they had noon shows all the time, and said, "Hey, you know, here in a couple hours, uh, Waz wants you to come on the Bowler Show, and he connect for us and and get him on." So. It, it was always good, and like you said, nowadays it's a, you know, a one click away from uh, the, you know, the tournament ending, and you guys, uh, yourself, and maybe one or two other people, if if that, um, writing about you know what happened in the bowling world. So thing, things have changed a lot since we first started the show. You know, it was, sure. it was you know, Matt McNeil was just on here. He's like, yeah, that was ten years ago. I was like, holy moly, that was ten years ago. So it's kind of scary how fast uh, the time has gone by. Yeah, I do appreciate you guys. I mean, I understand the time, you know, you know you're running tournaments on weekends and then trying to put together a show. People think a podcast, oh, you just come on and talk, but you got to set things up and technical issues. And I know enough about it to, to understand that it's, you know, it, more power to you guys and totally understand. I never, you know, I've had guys at times who ask me, hey, you want to start a podcast? And I'd be like, well, I already have two full time jobs. I don't really need a third one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two full-time jobs too, and I think I sleep a whole lot more than you do. So <laughs> everybody does. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, Jeff and I, Jeff and I cross paths in the middle of the night. When he, when he uh, comes on, I see him posting stuff. I'm like, oh boy, I got to go to bed in an hour or two. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, that's uh, I see that, and I'm like, well, it's getting late because Jeff's up, and you know, you can uh, nine o'clock at night. Jeff's, uh, you know, he's got he's got to go to bed. He's always been, uh, you know. Mm. For his regular job, he's been up up bright and early, and had to do that. So um, he'll he'll miss a c occasional pack game or whatever late at night, but uh, that's always been his schedule. But uh, Jeff, we got some other people in the queue today. I, I just wanted to take a moment and seriously thank you for what you've done for us and what you've done for the bowling world over the years. Um, there's there's not a lot of guys like you out there anymore. Maybe maybe hardly any that do yeah. uh, if, if what you do now, as far as you know, in depth and everything that you do. So. Uh, thank you. Thank you for always contributing to the show. You got it. We'll miss you guys. All right. Hashtag go pack go tonight. Uh, good luck. They just need to win the win and they're in. Is that right? That's yeah. Win and they're in and Seattle just won in overtime. Uh, so uh, the lions can't win. Yeah. Uh, it's either Seattle or the Packers for the final spot to go to San yeah. Francisco and get their butts kicked next weekend. <laughs> and that well, will happen. You never know. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers. So, he can't uh, beat San Francisco. Yeah, that, yeah, that's gonna be a tough. That's gonna be a tough win there. 
So, all right, Jeff, you take care and uh, have fun tonight, sir. And thank you again. See you later. All right. Jeff Riggles, of course, with 11thframe.com. And uh, Luke, let's uh, let's just keep rolling here. I, have, I wasn't sure how this show would go. I didn't know if people would be clicking in and out. We might have some downtime. We might have four people in the queue. But uh, so far, it's kind of rolled along here. We've been getting everybody in. Uh, obviously, we're not doing interview form today. So, Luke, if there's anything you want to add here, I know I've been talking a lot kind of because uh, this was uh, originally uh, something that I did, and we've talked uh, to a lot of people from way back when. But if you got something that uh, you want to talk about, uh, this your you know this is your last chance on this venue, so uh, you just you just chime in and let me know, okay? Yeah, I think as soon as we, I might say a few things as soon as we run out of gas, but we got uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Guinness Book of World Records in the uh, in the queue here, so. All right, let's pull your uh, buddy in here. On. I have no idea who you're talking about. So, yeah, oh, it's yeah. Adam Barra. Yeah. Adam <laughs> Barra, what's what's he in the record book I for? Yeah. that at all. Uh, is he got a, some obscure record I don't know about? Uh, I yeah. heard that uh, uh, at one event that I uh, almost beat him at that uh, he got lucky. But I remember that. But uh, obviously, people know that Adam uh, Adam has a uh, world record for uh, most strikes in an hour. He's probably got a couple others. Adam, welcome to the show. What's up, guys? How you doing? Thanks for having me on. We're doing great, and I appreciate you. Uh, you're you're wanting to come on the show here. I know, like, mm -hmm. like we've talked with everybody today. It's uh, it's hard sometimes on Sundays, and, and you guys are bowling, you're doing stuff, you're traveling, whatever. But uh, you you've always been accessible, and uh, you know I'm I'm not sure there's a, I'll, I'll just say it out loud, I'm not sure there's a better ambassador in the bowling world than you, sir. I appreciate it. No, I mean it's uh, missing tonight was not a possibility, regardless of what's going on. I mean for what you guys have done over the years to, you know, promote and to excel bowling in all the ways that you have. Um, I applaud you guys. It, it's sad that it's coming to an end, you know, but like they say, all good things come to an end and I'm sure some uh, great opportunities and some good things will come in the future for you guys. So I'm not worried about that for you guys, you know, whatsoever. So I do thank you guys for all that you did over the years. Well, thanks for saying that you're, you're a good role model as far as that goes. And I, I try to check in every Thursday night when uh, you come on with a live video and, uh, you know, I can actively root against you shooting 800. I pick 799 every week just, just for fun. I figure nobody else is going to pick that number. It's crazy how many people play that. It is, <laughs> you know, just, uh, you know, well, and there's there's lots of reasons why I think that it's as popular as it is just because it, you know, and my thing, I started that just to get the non-bowler engaged into bowling, like, you know, just, you know, just like playing the lottery. Guess your three numbers and, you know, you're engaged and then, um, you know, now it's 35, 4,000 people play each week and those live streams are getting five, 600 people watching. It's, uh, you know, it's insane. I would have never thought that it would have escalated to what it did, but it's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, and, uh, you know, just like you guys do your live shows, it's, you know, you find ways to fill that void of time, uh, you know, just what, what do you say? What do you do? Um, you know, just remix it up and have some live contests and, you know, if anybody has a question, answer on the live stream, and they always inbox me. I get about 35 messages a, a week or a day, uh, just various things asking. So that's that's tough to keep up with. But you know, my theory is, and it always has been, if if someone's willing to take the time out of their day to you know reach out to you, the least you could do is at some point you know find time in your day to respond back. So yeah, well, you do a great job. I mean, you don't have, it's not like you've got five kids running around the house or anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. hey, you are stopping at five. Is that correct? You got enough for a uh, Oh, boy. Well, I would like to think that we're stopping at five. I thought we were stopping at one. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, God has blessed us in many ways. And actually, it's funny because we had a scare a few weeks ago. I shouldn't say scare. We had, uh, she was late. So, oh boy. Uh, oh. that's that's when I was in St. Louis for the holiday doubles, and then, um, and then I came home for a day, and then I had to go to Muskegon uh, for a hammer video. So she didn't; she kind of kept that a secret from me because she's like, "I didn't want to stress you out," you know. But uh, <laughs> at that point, it was like 13 days late, and then, oh boy. yeah, and so finally, that she <laughs> she calls me, and she goes, "Thank God," you know, like. <laughs> 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 But uh, yeah, so she was kind of freaked out about that. But yeah, I, I think we're done. I mean, she's her and I are both forty three, and uh, we've 
we've had enough sleepless nights, so we're we're good. Yeah, the joke was uh, always the the you've got a companion team now, so now it's time to quit. And um, you know, you talked about the being on the online during league. You know, I I go to league and I get questions like you as far as uh, what's upcoming tournaments and stuff. I, I just want to bowl, you know, and and but I end up answering all the questions and doing everything I should, but. I, I get the time constraints. It, it's hard sometimes, and, and uh, e- even at my level, I can only imagine what, what people are sending you all the time. So um, you know, can, you know, kudos to you for being able to do that. No, nah, it's, it's, it, I, I really, truly do it, it, enjoy it. And and I think that, um, you know, there, and I'm almost 15,000 followers, but I, I think that, you know, a testament to that is interacting with people and, you know, we're trying to respond to them as much as you can and, you know, make them feel, you know, important, just like they make me feel important when, you know, where they're reaching out to me. And, and I don't, I don't see it as just a fan or a follower. I see it as a friend, you know, and, and, you know, I, I thank them all the time for the support. And, um, you know, those, those followers are engaged followers. Um, those aren't ones where you can boost your post and, you know, some people buy them. I don't even know how in the heck you do that, but, um, you know, those, those are definitely earned and, and, you know, we don't ever knock on wood. We don't have any fall, fall unfollow, you know, for any, any various reasons. So, um, you know, it's, it's climbing. We're almost at, I think it's like 17, 985. So I've been trying to get it each. I think I'll get there this week though, you know, it's with the followers, but um, no, I, I truly, you know, do pride myself on, on trying to engage and respond to everybody that, that that's, looking for an answer or help. Well, that's awesome. I think, uh, I think loose channel is in the, uh, 18 to 19,000 range. And actually that's while, cool. while you're here, somebody wants to know what, uh, what is your highest series ever? Eight, seven, eight. uh, two. Yeah. What did I have? Yeah. Two seventy nine, three hundred, two ninety nine. All right. Well, once again, you've uh, bested my 857 and embarrassed me on live uh, live internet here. So, uh, you know, Adam, that was fun when we did that event in, in 2018, uh, the Barter versus Waz. Um, you know, me coming through your town, it just the things just worked out. We were heading east for uh, to Syracuse and and being able to do that. That was one of the, you know, you look back on those things and you you know you see the progress of Ella and you see. Uh, yeah. stuff going on with Jensen and, and how he's how he's doing and you know you're connected to those people forever and I know you're there in town of course and and uh, you you follow their progress but it, it's it's good to just think about that stuff I mean you, you don't I'm sure you do the same you don't sit back one day and go uh, yeah I'm great I did all this stuff but having those memories and knowing yeah. that you've done some good for people uh, it is fun to look back at I mean, what would we raised over what over nine thousand bucks for that for those two families in in one day? I mean, not in one day, but in one venue. You know, between the basket raffles and you know the endless work that you know that our wives did and everybody else with the sponsors, Storm, Hammer, Turbo, everybody. You know, but um, you know, like I've always said, and and I mean, you know this as well. Uh, the the bowling world, when when somebody is in need. In, 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 a, in need of support or financial help, whatever, whatever it is, the bowling world is an unbelievable place when that situation happens. I mean, uh, you know, to, to be able to raise that much money in, in, in um, you know, the, we just did a race for strikes. I mean, that was the entertainment factor, but the, the, the reality and in, in the, in the thing is, is that we did it for the family so, and that, um, you know, that impacted and changed their lives forever. And, and you know what what i try and do with these with these event with these with these events and you know, these guinness records and stuff is um you know this isn't anything about me or or hammer or turbo you know it's great that they're along and i'm just the facilitator but the reason that i that i make these things public is because we want them to catch on we want other people to go out and do that so if they can see that if somebody you know, some small town guy from Youngstown, Gerard, Ohio, can reach out to his good friend over here in the Midwest, and they can facilitate something together and and do a race for strikes and raise nine thousand dollars. You know, for a kid with cancer and a girl with an incurable disease, in one day, they should go out and try and do that. You know, that you would hope that it grows on people and it promotes it for other people to do it because, like I said, the bowling world, 
is an unbelievable thing. And the people in it with all walks of life just get involved and they, they love to help. I mean, look at the promise to page thing, how much money we raised and, um, you know, with that Guinness record, it's, it's just, it's astonishing. It, it's fantastic. And, um, you know, it's just, you know, I, I have ambitions to do more and more things. I mean, COVID put a kink in things. Obviously I tried to work out things with you and then, you know, when we were going to be out there and then that, you know, fell through and that's mostly my doing, but then COVID too. So, um, one day I will get out your way and, you know, return the favor for sure. You got my word on that. So, well, I appreciate that. We'll, we'll figure out something. Uh, there's a, uh, there's plenty of time. Uh, there's plenty of time for that. And, you know, you also do some stuff that that's not bowling related people, you know, people think, well, he just does the, the bowling stuff and he's just doing it for bowling. But, uh, take a moment and talk, talk a little bit about what you do around Christmas, uh, to honor your father. Yeah. So, uh, on, Christmas Eve in 2012, um, I'll just go back to the story in the beginning. My, my father was diagnosed with cancer in September of 2010. And uh, when he got his diagnosis, um, hold on, buddy. Hold on. <laughs> I'm on a show, honey. He, uh, bring him on. Bring him on. Come here, Lofton, real quick. <laughs> yeah, say hi to everybody. This, this kid is crazy right here. Come here. <laughs> I can imagine. Marcy's there. You can put her on, too. Come here. All right. Ah, oh, there we go. What's up, buddy? Uh, this is Lofton. That's Dave. Lofton. As in Lofton the gutter. How you doing, Lofton? They're Welcome losing. to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the bowling world, buddy. So, uh, so Lofton, I'm talking about my dad right now, what we do at Christmas time. So I'm going to lead into it. And we're, we're going to see if you remember anything about the Christmas. Don't say anything yet. We'll see how good your memory is, okay? All right, so my dad uh, was diagnosed in September of 2010, only given a few weeks to live. And um, and just through the power of prayer, you know, power of hope, um, he ended up getting to or surviving uh, to see uh, Marcy and I get married and actually the birth of, of Blake, my 10-year-old. Then I uh, passed away on Christmas Eve in, in 2012. So... He lived about a little over two years, you know, a lot longer than the two weeks that they had given him. But um, so the following year, you know, Christmas time is a special time with your family. And, and you know, we didn't want to sit around and mope around. We wanted to do something in his honor. We wanted to share his story. And because um, it truly was an, an amazing story of of having little to no time to live and and eventually living two years is is quite impressive, you know. But um, his, his mental state of mind and, and high hopes, um, we wanted to share that story with, with people that had a similar situation and circumstance. So we uh, delivered to first year like two or three people, um, you know, went in their house, shared the story, and we actually gave them some gifts of money. Some people needed food. We It was just donations throughout the family. And, um, and um, you know, eventually – what happened was with the first Guinness record, uh, Craig Elliott had come on here, boys, come here. Um, so Craig Elliott come aboard and, and, uh, here, Blake, get in the live stream, buddy. That's Blake. Hey, Blake. Hey, Brooksy, come here, honey. They got their pajamas on, Dave. They're almost right at bedtime. All hey, right, you so are you Eastern time, so. You guys are going to stay here for a second. So through the first Guinness record, um, Craig's like, hey, this is a good opportunity if you know if you want to do this Guinness record, and I'm not going to get with the story behind it, but it was an opportunity to raise money for the foundation, which we eventually did, raised a couple thousand dollars, and it just skyrocketed from there. Where the bowling world, like I was talking about with the donations, you know, every year we've got repeat donators, and through the live stream, um, we were able to get some donations and we've got my family directly helps donate. And, um, you know, people like, I mean, there's a long list of people, so I don't want to single anybody up. We had a lot of bowling friends, um, donate quite a bit of money this year. We were, I mean, if you factor in what, uh, we had over 20 people this year, guys, right. That we donated to. Okay. So here, hold on. So over 20 people, but, um, we had some people just take on a family of eight themselves and they, you know, that we facilitated the delivery and stuff. And then we still deliver to Ella each year, Avion and Wills. We have, 
some people that we repeat to each year that we deliver to. But um, so this year was the most people that we've ever delivered to. Uh, it was over you know 20 or so people, um, some affected with cancer. Um, uh, you know, one girl was or one lady was a single mom um, with uh, two kids. She's going through a rough time with with cancer. So, I mean, some of these families we were able to give them close to a thousand dollars, you know, each um, with donations. But all right, so I want you guys to tell Dave. We'll have to look at that camera. Brooksy, get in here. So, what Dave wants you guys to tell these people that are watching. Why do we deliver to families on Christmas Eve? Look at that camera and tell them. Uh, because <laughs> your dad died on, on Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. And then because of him, do we give the families in need? Why do we give to families in need? Um, because we bring your We bring them presents, right? Yeah. Why do we do that? Um, ever presents? Blake, why do we deliver presents to them? Uh, because your dad died on Christmas Eve because of cancer. That's right. And you guys promised me, especially this year, you guys promised me that when Mommy and I aren't able to do it anymore, that you guys are going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You promise? You're going to continue doing that forever? Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's awesome stuff, man. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm, I, you know... I figured I'd have you on here, and we just talk uh, talk bowling in the show. But this is this is great stuff, man. I appreciate you bringing them on. Yeah. Say bye to say bye to Dave. Bye, bye. Uh, all right, Adam. Thank you, though. Once again, I appreciate you spending time with us tonight and spending time uh, with us at various points in the show. You've always always been there whenever you could, and as you said, you know you're you're traveling, you're doing stuff. You got a million people tugging at you, and uh, we we value the time that you spent with us. No, nope, you're you're very welcome. Like I said, I I wish you guys nothing but the best. Uh, you know, I know there's great things ahead for you. This isn't this isn't the end. It's just the beginning of something great. And um, you know, if there's ever a foundation that needed to be laid to to things that were great in bowling, you guys have definitely have done that. Uh, it's been great for many years, and I can't thank you enough. And if there's anything I could ever do to help you along the way, I'm here for you. So thank you. All right, buddy. I appreciate it, Adam. Thanks. Thanks for. Uh... Thanks for everything, sir, you do in the ball world. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Right, thank, thank you. Bye. All right. Obviously, you guys know who that was. Adam Barta had a great story there. Luke, I don't know how much you were able to hear at the end, but yeah, uh, yeah. him and I talked about our, our event, and then we talked about real life after that. So mm -hmm. a lot of good stuff uh, from Adam over the years. And hopefully uh, we'll, we'll have a chance here. As he said, uh, originally he was going to come back here in town and do an event with me but unfortunately with covid and some other things it just didn't happen so he will uh we'll figure out uh we'll, the barter versus was too will happen here sometime uh next year maybe in the following year and we'll uh we'll, we'll keep people updated on that that's one thing i'll be doing uh, i may do a couple of charity events a year now maybe i'll get a little more time on sundays or whatever yep. but um adam uh, a great ambassador for the game so so, uh, Luke, is uh, is our next guest ready to go? Is he uh, hanging out in the queue there? Uh, he stepped away for a minute, but uh, he has worked through his technical issues. So um, I might take the moment to... Are right, you talking for that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, while, while it's been a busy year for several different things, I've, I've been able to talk to a whole bunch of people that I don't think I'd have ever gotten the opportunity to talk to or, or, or stutter at or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so it's been, it, it's been great doing the show. And I knew when I got into it in the first, we both knew, cause I mean, you guys just keep getting busier and busier with tournaments and, um, I've, I've got the job and even though I'm actually at, at home now, I don't travel for work anymore. It's still busy. I still use the weekends for, uh, for doing a lot of stuff. And I try, I try to be a lot like, uh, like Adam does. Like you was just saying, if somebody sends me a message, I try to send somebody something right back. And we have conversations, and that's doing that right now as you're speaking. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's the thing is, I'm a, a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pro shop guy at heart, and so when somebody sends me a message, I want to send them something back, and I think that that's been, like he said, that's one of the bigger things. Uh, 
uh, as far as why the channel's where it's at is just because I talk to people. I meet them on a, on a certain level. I'm not just because I'm sitting here with a, with a jersey on that's got a, a million different patches on it or logos on it. That doesn't mean that I'm anybody special. And the, the thing that I try to impress to a lot of people is that everybody on the planet is better at something, at something than you are. And so just because I'm better at throwing a, a ball at some weird looking sticks than, than somebody else is, doesn't mean that they're not a whole lot better at something else than I am. So I, I try to keep it in perspective that, uh, and it, it's really kind of interesting too, is that I've, I've talked to a lot of people uh, like, uh, like Stu Williams, I've gotten the chance to talk to him. He does the, the beef and Barnsley thing and they're, they're pulling up their YouTube channel. And there's some other people that I've reached out to here recently that back when they started their channels and I was a whole lot, my channel was a whole lot bigger than theirs was, uh, they were asking, Hey, can you, can you offer any, any suggestions or, uh, can you help me out or take a look at this and see what you think, see what it looks like or whatever. And so I'd offer them some pointers here and there. Um, so people like Luis Napolis, his, his channel is bigger than mine is now. Uh, JR Pro Shop, Jordan Jung, he's on the, I think he's on the Canadian national team uh, with, with Frankie and uh, Darren Alexander, and their channel is bigger than mine is now. And uh, Packy with, with the house, he, he asked me for some pointers on YouTube stuff way back when. They're, they're a bigger channel now. And so, you know, you've always got to, you've always got to take time for people. You've got to, um, I, it's my turn to ride some coattails now and ask them for some advice or some, <laughs> some help or, uh, uh, share, share a video here and there. But, uh, but yeah, you just gotta, everybody's, everybody's important. And it's, I remember when I was a little guy and I'm still, I'm, I'm still kind of a little guy as far as some, some certain things go, but, uh, yeah, you always just gotta, gotta treat people with respect and that's, and so it's, it's been very cool to be able to talk to some of these people that I would have never been able to talk to. So I'm kind of wrote, riding your coattails a little bit here too, but uh, we, that's the thing is we can all help each other out. And so I think no matter how busy it's been, how busy we are, uh, it, it's, it's been a, it's been a good thing and a good run and um, I'll miss it. But at the same time, we've we've got plenty of other things to do now too, and that just opens doors for other people and other things and whatever else. So, looks like yeah. uh, looks like Mr. Duke is uh, ready to go. All right. Well, let's uh, let's bring him on. I've also, uh, in a programming note, my original radio partner James Spoister is going to join us sometime in the eight o'clock hour. Or so. Okay. We'll get him on without uh, without him. The show really never would have taken off. I, I that's how I got into radio. So, it uh, without the starting it off with the sports schmucks back in uh, four four oh four, almost twenty years ago. Luke is when we started mm -hmm. April fourth of two thousand four. Easy to easy to remember. So, yeah. So, all right, let's keep the let's keep the, the the carousel rolling here. Let's bring in our next guest. Uh, I think, I think most people probably know who this guy is. Uh, I think so. If yeah. you don't, uh, he's got a Cowboys shirt on. I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> Obviously, he's, he was in Fort Worth for a while. He's been in a few different cities. Of course, his name is Norm Duke. Norm, very excited to have you on our last show here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Cheers to you guys. Cheers. And, uh, I, you know, sorry. That, that was painful. That was pain. I was thinking about Dale Ballard a little while ago. He lives in Breeze, Dallas Cowboys, and I was thinking, oh man, yeah, I can remember <laughs> Dale and I consoling one another after games at times. <laughs> well, uh, Fort Worth's got to be a special place to you. Uh, I'm probably going to botch this, but uh, wasn't it? Wasn't, was it the not the Colonial? What was it called there? The uh, your first tournament where you won at Quaker State? Quaker State. I didn't win that. No, what, what what was your first win? Cleveland? My first win was in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, yeah, it just hit me. I got the wrong, got the wrong. But my one, first but, uh, uh, ever tournament on the national tour was the Quaker State. I bowled it as an amateur uh, when I was seventeen. Yep. So yeah, yeah I, I mean, Jeannie Holsey owned the place, and her and my mom were were uh, were friends. Uh, my mom had a bowling center at the time, and and so did Jeannie. So they hung out when they went to the bowling conventions, and so the fact that she was the host made that really special, and the fact that you know it was. 15 minutes door, door door to door that's good i can imagine 
So, so let's, uh, you know, we're just having fun on this show. There's no structure, no interview. But uh, what what would you say the highlight of your bowling career is? Would it be the your first win, uh, winning twice at age 54, or being in Kansas City to induct me into the Kansas City Bowling Hall of Fame? Well, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was definitely it. <laughs> that was a that was a stroke of luck, man. I, I had no idea, and all of a sudden, uh, there you were, and you're like, "Hey, I can you come talk to me before." I was like, "I didn't even know you were coming." And so uh, you didn't uh, recognize me. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I would. He, would he even know me at that time? And uh, probably probably knew my name more than anything. It's obviously it's like Dave Wadka or Dave Waswell. It's a, a different name. So no, I remember playing with you uh, very well, in fact. And uh, the Hall of Fame. I mean, very deserving. Congratulations. Well, thank you. And hey. uh, man, you've come a long, long way. So you were telling <laughs> your viewers that uh, 2004 is when you started. My gosh, doesn't time fly? <laughs> it's 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 amazing. I mean, you 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 know, like you said, you were 18 when you when you got your first title. Uh, you had, and you talked about this. You had, you had a little dry spell after that. Uh, we we kind of joked about that at the, at the Hall of Fame induction. Uh, I believe at the time you had 33 titles, but uh, you went through a dry spell. Talk a little bit about that, maybe just uh, real quick and and. Uh, you know, your thoughts about, uh, hey, what was going on at that time after you got a win so quick and then it took a little while? Yeah, well, you know, I was fortunate to get a win early. Um, a lot of things aligned, no doubt about it. Uh, I look back and I think about how lucky that I was in order to uh, win a tournament. Heck, I bowled Earl two times in a row in match play. That was awesome. Wow. Uh, Mark Roth was sitting in the alternate chair, so he was sixth. So there was just a lot of things there that was so special. It was crazy. Uh, but at the time, you know, I thought, well, this is what I do now. This is my job, and and uh, and we do good work. Well, after not playing uh, as well as as I expected for the next year or two, I made a couple of shows. Uh, you know, each of the years, it's just that I wasn't I wasn't doing the damage that I wanted. Why? So I recognized that I had to invest a tremendous amount mm -hmm. in. Uh, what would be something I could rely on. Uh, and I knew I wasn't really big like Wes Malott. I couldn't throw it over the heads, and I couldn't just throw it uh, 100 miles an hour. Um, mm. I couldn't spin a ball at the rate, uh, especially uh, the kids today, but as as well as Roth or Holman back in those days, Weber, um, and Leto, those guys would circle it around me. So I knew that I was in trouble if I didn't change some stuff. And it's not something that you do in, in – uh, you do in two or three months, uh, especially those changes that I was trying to make. One was I knew that I had to be the best spare shooter known to man. Well, you don't just do that overnight, you know. You don't just say, "Okay, I'm going to practice at my spares every day and I'm going to be great next year." <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work out like that. Uh, but but I recognized that was something. In uh, the versatility part of it, thankfully, I recognized that because of the formats and the way a four day event transpires. Uh, I knew I did not have to dominate uh, any of the days. If I generated the wood that, that I know I could, then the boomers were going to have ups and downs through the week, and the straighties are going to have up and down, the lefties are going to have up. And if I could just constantly uh, pull my weight each day, then I could find myself actually in a dominant sta a state. I tell you what, that was hard to see at the time. But I believed in it, and and I stuck to my guns. It just took longer than I thought, you know. And then once I got good enough with this versatility, here's what really happened: is I would make a television show, and let's say I was predominantly throwing it straight. Well, the, all the people on the show are the best straight ball players that has ever walked the earth. So I'm doing what I am. Uh, uh, let's say it's my second or third preference, and it's their number one. And then the next week I'd make a show and, and I'd be booming it, but so are all the other five, and that's all they ever did. So I, I, I figured out that, wow, you have to beat these guys at their best, not just on, on the last day of the tournament. You have to win the tournament, and that became very, very hard. In fact, my television record there for about seven or eight years was really awful. And a lot of that was choking because I just didn't believe in myself and some of the things that I was, uh, that I was doing wasn't, you know, I wasn't confident with. So you go through that little struggle and you have to learn how to win. Took a long time, but if you look back. <laughs> hey, uh, you, you persevered. Mean, it, just, it just breezed by, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. you, per, you persevered pretty well. And I, I, you know, when you talk to people, 
you, you know, you're, you're you, I'm, for my for self, Earl has always been my goat, and people talk about Walter Ray and whoever, but I, I don't think anybody could have any argument with calling you the most versatile player of all time. We, we've seen you mid-match uh, more than one time uh, move four zones left and loft the gutter or, or go back to the right. And, and, you know, in crucial situations at time when, when a lot of people wouldn't have the guts to do that, but you were confident to do that because you could do both ways. And and people, you know, you, you'd fool some of the announcers. You come back from break and all of a sudden you're uh, you're four, you know, four zones left and uh, uh, a couple of board, a couple of arrows. And, and they're like, hey, what, what just happened? But that was to me that I, I don't think anybody I can't say anybody else was as versatile uh, as you on, uh, were during during your time on the, the tour. No, I'd agree with you. And, and maybe the, the reason was because they weren't as confident. Uh, maybe they were as versatile, just didn't didn't show it. But I had a mantra that said, do it at will and without fear. If you cannot do it at will and without fear, then first of all, you're reading something and you're not adapting to your read because you have a preference over here. So that's the at will. And then once you decide to do it, do it without fear. Otherwise, by the time you get comfortable, you're already out of here. You know, somebody's yeah. already got the hook. So that was a big, big thing for me is, is do it at will and at, without fear. And so maybe that's the reason that I was so uh, uh, quick to accept a change and make it. And, you know, they didn't always work well. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> hey, uh, you, but, and, and, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's more of a Hail Mary situation. I've got, I don't have anything here. The other guy's. Uh, 30 or 40 up I mean, I've got to try something and and you know that's a little easier to do but there's times where you just decide hey it's it's time I this is how I'm seeing it I've seen this during the week and you would make that change so um hey guys, do you remember uh the, the 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 team the league this year and the first shot I threw on in the league was a three six nine ten of course mm -hmm. I choked <laughs> but <laughs> I'm on the left lane that, that hooks so much and I looked down and there was no way to make it in my mind. There was, there was no place on that lane to make that spare. And I decided at the time to just to throw the big wheel backup ball at it. And, and so I did that on live television frame one and made the spare. But Tommy Jones and Billy O'Neill, they've never seen that. Uh, Bill has seen, has seen me do that at a first shot trying to get a strike, but never, you know, on television trying to make three, six, nine, ten. And both of them looked at me on the way back. You know, they've been my partners for so many years. They've been bowling against me for so many years. And they just said, where did that come from? Uh, but you don't just do that without preparation. And so there's no telling how many years I prepared for a shot that I never really used until I'm 58 years old. <laughs> and, and darned if I didn't use it. All right, uh, Norm, I'm going to ask Luke right here point blank. Luke, when I leave the 36910, how do I shoot it every single time? God, I have no idea. <laughs> which, which, uh, yeah, you won't be leaving it left-handed, I would hope. Anyway. How, how do I shoot any... Punch, any? I know. You, are, you punch the button and take six <laughs> out. Yeah, that's, that's what <laughs> you do for YouTube videos. That's like the rest of the suckers actually have to throw at it. I just get it and strike that time, delete. So. All, right, all right, Luke. I know we don't bowl a lot together. I'll make it easier. How do I shoot every single right side spare? Three six ten, three ten, ten pin, six pin, three six nine ten. I don't even know. They don't let you switch hands. Luke, it's with the backup ball. I even know that. Thank, thank you, thank you, Norm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I can't believe Luke didn't know that. I, I'm kind of lost on that. He's seen me bowl. Backup but, ball. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I throw the, I throw the backup ball at every right side spare, especially the three six nine ten. There's different. Uh, you know, I can make it two or three different ways. Yeah, so I can you be can a make it on the pocket or Brooklyn, sure. Yeah, and the left side's so easy uh, on house, and <laughs> I can throw it anywhere, and it'll walk its way across the lane. So, I think like ninety eight point ninety nine point eight percent of the time when we're both in a bowling center together, I'm on one side of the tournament desk, and you're on the other. So that's true. That's true. I'm usually behind <laughs> the, be fair. Yeah. the desk. Uh, it's not like we bowl a lot, but I I I, I thought maybe you would have that. I have that answer. I put you on the list. But that's okay. Yeah. So anyway, this is more about us having fun uh, sure. on this last show. Norm, you've you've been more accessible. I'll just I'll say it out loud. Uh, Jason Belmonte's always been great, and there's been some others that have, that are in your class that have been, that have come on the show and, and given us time. But 
you've always done it when you when you could. And uh, I really appreciate the time you spent with us over the years. Well, you're so welcome. I'm 100 percent with your request, by the way. Uh, I don't know why. I guess it's because we both throw backup balls at three, six, nine, tens. But... <laughs> and now oh, everybody yeah. knows. <laughs> it's smart. I mean, I mean, uh, have you ever thrown? I know, like the the two eight ten. Um, can you throw left handed at it? We've seen Chris Barnes do it on TV. Is that something you could do? Oh no, no, no. I I don't do left handed very well. <laughs> uh, I I couldn't average one hundred forty left handed. So nothing's coming off my. But I I have tried to back it up. Yeah. And no, that doesn't work very well either. If I'm going to go for the the the, the, the what what did you say the two eight ten? Uh, yeah. Then I'm going to try to uh, to make the the two ten and then have it squirrel out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've seen uh, who, who's made that. Meek has made it on uh, TV. Chris Barnes has made it. There's been a couple others, but not not very often. But um, you should try the left hand left handed shot. Luke and I. I'm not sure if you remember this from the previous shows, but uh, Luke and I both have multiple 300s with our offhand, our, our left hand. Well, good for y'all. No. But so, as, yeah. as y'all both know now, I, I don't bowl anymore at all, none, zero. <laughs> yeah. So well, what, what are you never doing? have to shoot the 2810 again. Yeah. Lifetime. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, I don't like it when people brag that they don't have to bowl anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what are you doing? Let the people know what you're doing now. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the people say I retired. I didn't retire from bowling. No, I just stopped bowling. So, you know, after 41 years, I got it in. Trust me. I got as many games in as anybody walking. And I'm I'm proud of my body of work. And I know that from, from this point on, uh, Luke was, I, I probably won't be. And there lies the problem. Uh, I really enjoy success. Uh, I do not like to go and work that hard and train that hard and go out and make a check and lose $500 uh, to me that that just, you know, you got to end it. And so I do a lot of work now. I just don't bowl. So I do a lot of work for storm. Uh, the PBA asked me to do some things. I'm sure that they will ongoing. Uh, and I appreciate them asking. Uh, I have a company called next level bowling where we do clinics, seminars, uh, guest speaking, all kinds of booking stuff. Um, and then I'm working right now with Cool Week. We just uh, launched uh, um, some replica jerseys that I've worn over the past. And we're working on some other things, uh, much like Jason did, and of course, uh, Verity, others. So I'm involved, uh, just not having to rely on on the six pin hitting the 10 anymore, you know? And I'm all right with it, trust me. I'm just fine with it. Um, I would venture to say, as we saw in the Dallas Strikers 300, that nobody in the world has, has sent the six to the wall and kicked it into the 10 pin more than you. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Well, you know, Brian Voss uh, and Mike Machuga, originally Brian and I, but we brought in, heck, a lot of uh, uh, guys, uh, R.D. Miller, Mike Machuga, a lot of guys used to practice with us. But one thing we would do is we'd say, not only do you have to strike, you have to strike the way you call it. So you, if you have to trip the four, Sometimes we'd say trip the four into the nine, which was really tough. But uh, all the time, Voss would say, oh, no, no, no. I want, you know, he would give it that little hand gesture. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we learned how to how to get the six into the ten pretty well. Um, yep. And it was a lot easier once they came out with bowling balls that would track a little harder on the back end. <laughs> and so back in the 80s now that was not as easy of a shot in fact if you did it more more often than not you were following it back uh, yeah i'm i'm and i miss fall back that was that was when i could play <laughs> yeah if you couldn't fall, if you couldn't get the six pin to hit the 10 on a fallback then you shot the eight ten. it was just one or the other you got to live with one or enjoy the other and for people who don't know what fallback is, it's basically, I don't know, what's what's the pattern, the 52-foot pattern, Wolf? It's Yeah, there's no fallback. Or whatever, yeah. yeah and you, your, your ball is between right. 22 and 23 the whole way down until it just gets right in the head bin, mm -hmm. and then it, th there it is, and then you got to carry yeah. with the ball, not necessarily snapping, you know, at the very very end. But those were the good old days, Norm. I, I remember uh, – I remember a lot, a lot of stories back then. I remember watching you and Brian dominate when I was out there, and thinking, "How can these guys be doing this?" And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm scrapping to get twenty fifth, twenty fifth to fifty third checks each week. <laughs> and, uh, 
but uh, that's what that's that's fate. That's uh, you know it landed landed you with uh, I don't even know how many titles you have now, but um, and that landed uh, me here on the Bowler Show. So that's just the that's that's the fates of the bowling world, and and that's that's the way it is. I I, I would have liked to have done more out there, but it just it just wasn't in the cards. I tried again. Was well, it landed both of us on the bowling show? Yeah, exactly. I exactly. Mean, you can't argue that. <laughs> exactly, and it landed you in Kansas City uh, for my finest night uh, to be inducted, and uh, you know that stuff you, you'll you'll never you'll never forget. I remember walking on getting out of my chair, walking up to the front, and you handing me the plaque and shaking my hand, and and uh, you know those are moments you just don't forget. It was like a junior league bowler giving you a, a Hall of Fame <laughs> plaque. <laughs> Not exactly. It was uh, it, like I said, you're you're. You know, besides your your talent, your respect in the bowling world. I mean, you're not a you know you've never, at least on camera, you know, uh, gotten upset. I've I've never seen it, and and uh, you've always been a good ambassador of the game. I've seen you with people. I've been to your next level clinics. You were here at one in Mission Bowl here in town, and uh, I saw what you did with the kids there. And and the thing that uh, stood out to me is some of these kids came up to you after the clinic, and you were calling them out by name. And I was like, how do they, how does he remember their name already? It, 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 that, that stood out to me that you took the time, you know, when a kid comes up, you're like, Hey, whatever, we're signing autograph. You, you, you remembered some of them by name. Well, all, all of them. In fact, yeah. uh, one of the things that I demanded of myself and still do is that uh, the, the, the name tags will come off. And once they come off, I don't want to need them. And I think that the single greatest sound to any one person is the sound of their own name. I think that comes from Dale Carnegie and I believe it to be so. So if I can, if I can say their name without any help, uh, when they go home, I'm just one of them. Now I am a part of, of their life, their family. I'm not above or below them. And I think that that's so very important for uh, a, a kid to 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 have um, a uh, let's say a perceived relationship with me, yeah. Norm and I we were kicking it. I'd <laughs> much rather a kid say something like that than I met Norm Duke the other day. Look at his signature. No, I want him to say no, no. He's just one of us. So I thank you for the compliment. There, it is definitely something I try to do. And you know what? I was young at one time, and I had my heroes. I had some of them that treated me. Uh, the way you should be. And I had others that didn't. And I got to learn from them. I got to learn just as much from those that didn't than from those that did. Uh, I, I realized why I liked them so much and why I didn't really care for the others. And I said, don't be that guy. If, you have a, if you're going to be there, you have the choice, right? Uh, go the extra mile. And, and I have, oh gosh, the things I've enjoyed over the years for really giving a care and a pro -am and making certain that everybody in that pro-am when it comes to me is they're fulfilled yep. uh, that was that was uh, yeah we're donating our time and yes we do not want to be there a lot of the times because we're on the road 30 weeks in a row and uh yeah it, it's tough but if you're going to have to be there make the best of it and the fact that i did goodness the things that i enjoy now from the bowling world it's 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 endless. And well, I'm, I'm happy that I took that time. <laughs> yeah. I remember times uh, yourself, Carmen Salvito and some, uh, and some of the other older school guys, not that you're his age, but I remember <laughs> them answering my questions with, uh, you, you know what, David, this is how I feel about it. And they would, use, he would use his name. Uh, a friend of mine just texted me, Mike Adamski saying uh, whenever he was around Dick Weber, Dick Weber would always say his name. And he was like, well, how does he know he even know me, but he would always use, uh, your name first and that that makes it everybody feel good yeah um you know i read a book one time i, I don't know which one it was but they said look if you don't know somebody's name and you want to ask them it's, it's better to apologize that you have to ask again than it is to not know and go through time and dick weber actually showed me that in a sense that people that i had never met that were way older than me back when I worked with Dick, I knew him and he would call them by their name. And then he would walk off, Mr. Weber would. And they would say to me, how the heck does that man remember my name? I haven't seen him in 18 years. <laughs> and I'd look around, I'd go, well, is it on a sheet of paper? 
Is it there were there were sometimes some cheats around? You'd go, okay, that's where he got that name from. He, but he was smart enough to care enough to find out what that person's name is, use it, use it enough that he didn't forget it later on. And I tell you what, he was and and will always be the greatest ambassador to the sport of bowling who will ever know. Uh, some of us we try our best. <laughs> good. He he was so good without trying that we did. It's not a fair fight, you know. It's just not fair. Yeah, Dick. Dick was our Midwest Region director back then, and uh, you know, being able to bowl a few tournaments where he was the tournament director. Uh, you know, of course, he's passed that on to to John and and Rich. Um, that whole family. Um, you know, same thing. John and Rich uh, used first names that I remember. Uh, there was times I would remember hearing my name from Dick or, or uh, John in particular, and think, "Oh man, I'm in trouble." First, <laughs> I've done something wrong. You know, hey, I. Uh, I kicked a ball return or whatever, and they want to have a little chat, and they and they would chat with you, yeah. and they would say, "Hey, that's not uh, something that we do." But uh, I remember those times with, with when Dick was the re uh, Midwest Region director, and and he was great. He, I you know, how can anybody you know do that? that until uh, her her passing, uh, Juanita? I'm guessing for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. She has donated fifty dollars to the Hall of Fame in my name. Oh wow! I, I'm not the only one. Uh, I think that it came from what Dick did when he before he passed, but she continued that that uh, uh, commitment uh, until her passing, and that was one of the reasons that I was always reminded of of, of Juanita's passings because. I didn't get that $50 notice that said hmm. that uh, the Weber family has donated $50 in your name to the, uh, to the hall of fame. Where did that come from? Why did it happen? Um, it's because that family is just, it's just an unbelievable family. It, it really is. And so to, to Pete and to John and to Rich and to all of their family, I just say, yeah, y'all definitely had the pop-up. No doubt about it. No doubt, and uh, uh, you know, Luke. Uh, Luke is uh, Luke has always had fun here. Um, he, he talks about hey, you know during this year that he joined us that he hasn't you know doesn't necessarily had the opportunity to talk to people like you. So I'm going to give Luke the forum here. I know he's he's uh, going to want to talk to you here one Luke, more time Luke. before, you know, somebody like yourself will never talk to him again. Luke, my wife says it's not all that brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got the, uh, um, when we did, uh, your special show, your kind of retirement show, uh, Dave, unfortunately wasn't able to make it. And so I had the, the, the privilege and opportunity to kind of, kind of walk through that. Um, there is something interesting here that my, uh, wife just found when there was a, uh, bowling alley, here in Topeka that changed, that changed hands a few years ago. And they had some things uh, just laying around. And um, uh, one of them was a box of old PBA trading cards. Yeah, I remember so that. We well. got to, uh, yeah, we got to, we got the opening packs of these. And uh, it would be. I remember that picture it was taken in Tucson, Arizona. I remember the back of the card says that I have one title. Golden yeah. pin lanes. Did you yep. see that? National the tour title, lifetime title. one. I yes. One title. Uh -huh. God, I love that card. It really does. Yep. <laughs> anytime, anytime you think you're too big for your britches, you just go pull out your trading card and you look yeah. at the back. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it'll bring yeah. you right back down to size. Oh, that's great. Yeah, there's there's some really great photos in in, in some of these. I mean, we've got uh, we got Dell when he back when he had hair and a mustache and. Uh, we we got Pete, we got Walter. I mean, some of, some of these some of these photos are uh, outstanding. I remember I had to, I got to talk, talk to a Tish Johnson on a show one time, and I said something about back in the days of big hair and big glasses, and she she said she was going to get me back for that one day. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, this this has been great. I really appreciate getting to getting to talk to somebody like you, one of the one of the best of all time, and I. Uh, fortunate to have somebody like uh, Bob Benoit in town to hear stories from and talk about the old league team in Texas and uh, uh, some of, some of the adventures and uh, stuff like that. So it's I, I remember growing up and watch back when bowling was on Saturday afternoons and uh, Nelson Benoit Burton was, and yeah, was a great, 
great time. Bob was a great, great time. time. Now, yeah. if you wanted to have fun, you could laugh more with Bob Benoit without him even <laughs> with a snicker. Yeah. His sense of humor got so dry at times, but he was so witty that mm -hmm. Del Ballard and I and others would just be crying. Yeah. And he would be he would be furious. He would be actually complaining about something, you know. He would be in bitch mode and and Dell and I are just <laughs> yeah. flatlining. You know, yep. with, you know, there was nobody that could complain as well as Bob Benoit now. <laughs> yeah. And it's great. It's uh it's, it's kind of funny. I get his uh Lorinda works in the same building that I do here. And so I run into I run into into her in the elevator every once in a while and uh yeah, it's just it just Again, Bob's one of these, he's kind of on the, uh, he's diminutive, I guess you'd say. And, but yeah, he's one of those firecrackers that uh, you get him telling an old story or about uh, pranks that you guys used to pull or, uh, you know, talking about a, something he did to Bob Vespi back in the day. And it just, it, it's, it's so much fun. I don't, I don't get to see him as much as I'd like to anymore, but uh, yeah, it's always a great time. Yeah. You know, uh, we always have those that we, that we favored growing up well malacosta and and warren nelson and bob benoit were probably the three best complainers in the history of mankind <laughs> because if they started to complain you had to hear it now let's let's add joe hutchinson uh, uh joe hutchinson uh, uh, charlie tapp will, will tell you uh, just about how wonderful a complainer joe was <laughs> so sometimes when they got it going now you just they would draw a crowd just complaining. Well, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I definitely very much appreciate appreciate you. Appreciate getting to watch everything. Uh, not to not to date you. I mean, Dave did have to bring up earlier to Sandra Gringora that she was almost forty, but. Um, I yeah, I, I grew up watching you. Still enjoyed watching you and. Uh, just surreal to be able to talk to you so thank you i appreciate it look bowling has been so very very wonderful to me to to not just me but certainly me um i will forever be in bowling's debt i will try my very very best for the rest of my life to uh try to make good on that debt um, i think that the sport is deserving it's worthwhile and i think that it it has the ability to change people's lives for the good in many, many ways. And I get to watch that. And so it's not a downtime for me as far as you're retired now, take a deep breath and go get bored. Now it's time for me to take a deep breath and then go out and find out just how great this sport has been for others. Uh, I've just been so focused on my own bowling stories and bowling world that now I get to listen really hard to others explain just how important the sport is to them and it really is fulfilling when you know that you fell in love with it when you were eight nine years old and now you see the same thing happening uh with people that are eight and nine years old it's just great great yeah i, I think you're really going to enjoy getting a it, it's not necessarily a retirement it's a different opportunity it's yeah, a different right, direction, exactly. it's a different path, it's a whatever else. And I think you're really going to enjoy just getting to kind of step back and uh, just get involved in different different aspects of the game instead of actually, again, like you like you said, uh, that's, that's so great. Uh, depending on the the six kicking into the ten, that's that's a great. Yeah, and then I can now I talk like smack, it. and I don't have to uh, I don't have to to live up to it. <laughs> I, I can do whatever. It, yeah, it's great, great time for me. And look, guys, I just want to tell y'all, thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here for the sport, for covering it in, in some cases, and just uh, for being here when we're all in need. I know that y'all were here all through COVID. We appreciate that very much. Uh, a lot of us were going stir crazy, and you helped us through that. Uh, <laughs> kudos to all the things y'all have done uh, with the sport of bowling. Uh, it's in better hands uh, because of the investment y'all made. Thank you. Well, thank you for those kind words, Luke. Make sure that you save that for our comeback yeah. in eight years if we ever do. But yeah, <laughs> what, one, of, one of these days, we, we've got these uh, 
very I don't have my gloves on here, but very, very carefully we're gonna we're gonna remember this Norn Duke card and one that's, of these days. That's that's Golden Pin Lanes, I, yeah. I believe. Uh Norm, is that days. correct? Do you remember that was the in pair at Golden Pin Lanes, yes it was. Yeah, Pete Towns is his place and my and my yeah. I believe that just what a couple of years ago got torn down. I, I it did, yeah. Yeah. That's too bad. That was one of my favorite centers. I still remember uh, staying in the uh, no tell motel across the street. Right across the street. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Most of the big guys weren't staying in that if, place. If you ever stayed mine. there, yeah, if I, you ever stayed stories. there, you, you weren't on a roll. <laughs> no, there's stories uh, from that motel that uh, no, there's no tell, but we'll just say that. So I got uh, to you remember from how that hotel until, to yeah. uh, Tucson National, where they now play, you know, the, the golf tournament. Uh, yeah, that was we a played, very good <laughs> improvement. Yeah, we, that, play, and we, played, uh, we got to play that course. They, the PBA back then, as you know, yeah. uh, I played on Puget Sound, uh, Tucson National. They would set up scrambles for us, and uh, and we got to play back then. Oh, yeah. We played every uh, year right after the telecast. Yep. So the telecast didn't even end until, I guess, about 2 o'clock uh, in that time zone. And then we'd have, you know, our our, our uh, media uh, uh, obligations, and then we'd have to get all of our equipment out of the out of the bowling center. Well, you know, back then we didn't have near as many bowls as we do now, but no. we would take all the time to get completely out of there, and then we'd drive up and we'd play golf, and we'd always get eighteen in because it was it was light till eight o'clock. So yeah. man, what a great great finish to every event there. It seemed like it finished <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, that was a different time. There was a PBA school. I remember going to. PBA would have us going to different functions other than like the, the golf stuff. And that's just the way it was back then. That's how you became a professional. But uh, Norm, uh, we've got about uh, a, a few people here waiting in the queue. I, want, I just want to thank you once again uh, for coming on here, for being a great ambassador for our sport, uh, for our, our, our brand also over the years. Um, there, there's really not any words I can say other than thank you. And, and you just keep, keep doing what you're doing, enjoying your semi-retirement and, uh, Keep, keep up the great work with Storm. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all enjoy the rest of the show. All right. Thank you. All right, Luke, what do you say about a man uh, a man like that who's uh, one of the greats of all time taking out uh, a few minutes here on a Sunday night for us, uh, going through some technical stuff there and getting on the show? And uh, here especially recently, he's been he's been great. He's, he's been able to uh, concentrate on doing things like this while, while he's not bowling on tour anymore. So. Um, yeah, one of the, one of the greats and one of those guys, uh, like I said, I, I was lucky enough. He was, uh, hosting our, uh, award show that year in 2010 when I was inducted into the Kansas city hall of fame. And, and, uh, we caught up a little bit after, after the ceremony. Cause like I said, I was, I, I was afraid to go up to him before when he was talking to other people. At first I didn't even know he was there. I'd never heard that he was coming. And then, uh, you know, I was like, well, I'm not going to go up to Norm Duke and say anything. He's going to be like, oh, who are you? But I think we've realized over the years what kind of person Norm is. And uh, and after, you know, right after, he's like, he actually said to me, I remember this vividly. He's like, well, why didn't you come up and say something, you know, say hi? I was like, I didn't think yeah. you would know who, you know, who in the world is, you know, this guy. So uh, speaking of uh, who in the world is this guy, let's go ahead and bring in our next, next guest who has been patiently waiting. Uh, he's slightly less stature in the bowling world than uh, Norm Duke. But uh, not any more or less important to the show. He's been a big supporter of the show, especially uh, this year that we came back. So, uh, Luke, let's go ahead and bring in James Graham. And there he is, frightening as as always. How you doing, sir? Hello. All right, Luke, you got you got his. Uh, you, you may be having some uh, Steve Clinton yeah. sound issues there. Try yeah, again. Hey, picture, yeah, try try a different microphone on your audio. See if you can get into the settings or something. Uh, Klomkin's phone wasn't liking wasn't liking him either. So, so yeah, it looks like a nice black, bag of Kleenex there. He's got the yeah, yeah. crying towel out. I've been in that living room. I know what that looks like. <laughs> Time to bring down the Christmas tree, though. I think, right? Is that how about that? that, that, that oh, there we, we can hear you now. Okay. Whoops. Now, bring yeah, that now camera you around. Bring the camera around. <laughs> Your sound is good, Big J. Can you can you hear us? There we go. There, there it is. Yeah. All right, you good to go? I'm good. Are you can you hear me now? Uh, I can yeah. hear you, Luke. Are you yeah. getting some lag? No, we're all we're all good. It'll okay. be fine. I, I'm getting a little lag on here, so uh, we yeah. cross past talking. Right. 
Uh, Big J, we've just been checking in with everybody. I don't know how much you've got to listen uh, to the show, but uh, we want to thank you for your support of the show this year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Dave, you and I have been professionals together. Uh, was able to be on the show with you years ago. Um, so, Norm wore a cowboy shirt. That was very nice. Uh, <laughs> despite so, yeah, I've, I've gotten to know Norm too. Had him out at, at a clinic uh, years years ago. Uh, so, to be able to get to talk to him one last time and see him um, was 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 very nice. Human beings I've ever met in my life. Well, uh, if people they they know you now as as uh, operator at. Double J's Pro Shop, but talk a little bit about the old days. A lot of people may not realize that uh, for around a year, I believe, you were running the board uh, when we were actually on radio. You got a background uh, in college a little bit where you uh, learned a lot of this stuff in North Dakota. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the fun we had back in the good old days. Yeah, you know, I have a vocational degree in broadcasting. Um, so when you asked me to come on board, it was it was a no-brainer because – you know, radio me and uh, what I have experience in before, before I got into the shop, shop operating a life and really enjoyed it. I, I will say one of the best memories I ever had was bowling league one night from uh, Johnny Petraglia. I uh, got in touch with his son um, and uh, gave him, gave his dad my number. And I wound up bowling league well from New Jersey. Jersey number, and I go. There's only one person it could be, and I answered it, and lo and my team blind me out. Well, I took this phone call and talked to him, and said, "Hey, you know, do you mind coming on?" He was also a very nice guy. I've met him at Bull Expos before. Um, super, super nice guy. Chat with him. Um, you bring up a lot of the memories. I think this the 300 he shot on TV. One of the most memorable ones uh, that that a lot. A lot of people remember from back in the day, but uh, able to talk, talk to you know and, and see how a lot of these guys are very humble. Um, you know, Nor, Nor Ronnie Vitraglia, Walter Ray, those that I've met over the years from being in the industry, guys. And uh, it, 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 it's really nice to know that, that they have a huge how prowess and how big time they are in the bullying community. All right. Well, your your start with us is uh, brought you to this point today. We talked about Double J's Pro Shop, but uh, you've taken on a, another uh, a hat in the bowling world. Uh, talk about your new position with Bolero. Yeah. So I actually am an operations manager now um, for my center. I've um, been there for about six months now, now since the end of June, and uh, it's a different. I say that uh, uh, you know, it's it's a lot. But um, coming from the pro now working in the bowling industry from a corporate level, um, you get to see a lot of things at Bolero. It's, it's a very, uh, it's it's not a great word around here. It's not a great world around in the bowling community. But, you know, just like any other center, they operate their own way, and they do support bowling about it on a re more, more recreational standpoint. But I will say from from the things that they did to really show people they care about bowling is buying the PBA. Uh, regarding their acquisition, look at all the brands they brought in to represent and sponsor the PBA. Snickers to PBR. When's the last time, David, that the PBA has present, um, you know, the PBA? It's not been since the early 2000s when they had, last time they had a car sponsorship. So, to see Bolero bring in what they've bought, brought in, to them, it's very nice to see a big corporation like that. And I know that I've been on calls with the PBA or a lot of the Bolero um, staff, and Tom Clark's been on the call. So it's been nice to be able to chat to him about things that we're doing from the corporate side. And he's now a Bolero employee, just like, you know, locally, Toby Contreras is now a Bolero employee with regional director. Um, you know, so there's a lot of people that they have on staff that, that really do care. So uh, I know that, you know, they, they do get a bad rep around here. Um, for me, it was a no-brainer. I was asked to come on board back in March. 
Um, I, you know, doing in the shop industry, it's been a passion of mine for the last decade. It's been a decade now I've been doing it. My brother's now taking it over um, 100%. Um, I just kind of, you know, run behind the scenes. I've been able to bowl myself, David, uh, since the league ended in May. I've picked up a bowling ball oh, wow. once. New lane set in our center uh, back in October. So mm. that's another thing. Too. Our center has been going to put in over $2 million of upgrades that have really helped our center. Brand new lanes uh, needed. Um, there's still a few things they need to finish, but I think the biggest thing and the biggest impact were the lane. A lot of bowlers are, are you know, starting to see that they are the upgrades of what they've been doing. Is off. It's a lot of, you know, ambiance and whatnot, but the lanes, I think, were the biggest things that center desperately needed. All right. is, is that Hannah in the background I hear? Andrew, actually. He's, uh, he's talking with, so... Hannah's actually. Uh, I don't know. Were you, were you on earlier when uh, Mr. Adam Barta was on? I was not. We were at, at dinner. We went salty. <laughs> he brought uh, he brought three kids into the picture. Let's put it that that way. He's got like a whole army. So he's team yeah. waiting on. He's got a whole his... companion companion team. Oh. Well, that. Uh, Take a take a moment. Talk about uh, talk about uh, Reno, or I I don't remember where it was, but where where uh, where we have the big year was that 2014 Reno, where you had the the front ten and and uh, that, was my, that was my first year with you. I think it was Matt Canizero, I believe, came down and black clouded you. Yeah, it was that was the following year? Yeah, you're correct. Um, I, I remember the first year I was bowling with you. I had the front, and they had the reds. They had the red lights up, and I think that's when I shot. The that's when I shot 740 to fame. I finished 63rd in the nation in singles uh, back in 2003. We had the front 10, 10, and then Matt sees right there on the uh, on the uh, uh, entry was to where we were, right, right in that little foyer, right between the stands, and uh, a oh, not a solid nine pen, but a, a semi solid nine. Pen. Looked at, I think. I, I looked at Matt and I looked at you and I was like, that was my chance. That was my <laughs> chance to shoot. I've always had fun at Reno. Uh, I really want to get back because I know Reno, they're back in Reno, the stadium looks with all the upgrades. But uh, I've always had fun there. You know that, bowling with you. Um, struggle at every other place, but we go to Reno and I always dominate there. Nobody's ever gone to the National Bowling Stadium as a bowler. I think that's one thing you need to do um, nationals when it's in Reno because it definitely is one of the biggest spectacles in bowling. You can't just watch King Pen and, and get the illusion. You have to actually physically go to it and see it at this point in your life. Yeah, I think too many people talk about, well, we go to Reno every year. And it's like, well, no, we haven't been since 2017, I believe. It's been quite a while. And uh, it's you know the built-in settings there, as you said, it's it the, it's the National Bowling Stadium, and it's just different than than them plopping forty lanes in a convention center. It's totally different. Um, it's a you know you just you just sense the history that's in that building and of, of what people have done, and uh, you know it, you know we, let's talk about Matt for a minute. You know Matt Matt allowed uh, you and I to go come on streams there more than once. Uh, you know, and yep. and unfortunately, Matt dis did, was not able to make it today, so we can talk as bad as we want about him. But uh, you know, Matt was always great for our show. You know, you were there uh, during the time when when Canizaro's corner was on, and uh, you remember how valuable it was to the show because you know you don't always have a lot of content. And uh, you know, Matt was always there and always had his uh, during the the USBC time, especially during that four month period. I had that twenty minute segment and was a vital part of the show yeah and to see you know to see matt leave or with ipsy yeah, it was very nice uh i know he's been a valued valuable asset to the bowling community and be with ipsy uh it was very very good to see i know he's a friend of mine and uh I well wishes and, and hope all the best i knew he was going to stand up on his feet again um and he knows who matt canizaro is he's not just an eater of food, David. He's uh, he's one of the workers that he is now. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's he, you're going to see him resurface somewhere here soon. I, I have a feeling. 
and uh you know maybe not at the nathan's hot dog eating contest but uh that's something we had a lot of fun with last year you know i went out there for a, a month and worked with him and uh learned quite a few things and uh you know, he was a tyrant. He was, a, you know, had a reign of terror. He was a bully. Uh, of course, he was none of those things. I'm just having fun. He, he let me do my thing. He basically just threw me in. He said, hey, you're here. I didn't get a chance to, to train or anything because I got out there the day before the tournament. And uh, he just let me go. And and with the, the special circumstances uh, that were going on where it was in two venues, basically he sent me to the singles and doubles side and said, uh, you know, good luck. Here you go. And, uh, you know, we had a yeah. lot of fun. Um, we worked hard. We had long days. We, you know, I'd start get in there around two o'clock in the afternoon, and many times wouldn't leave till after two in, in the morning. But uh, that's those, those are times and those are things. You know, with that that having the the forum of the show, and uh, you know, being able to to have contacts in the world of, of bowling and do different things. Um, some of that time that, that we spent together was invaluable. So um, I just wanted to have you on here real quick and thank you for uh you know the yeah, time that you yeah. spent and and you know be, be honest uh you know you know uh board op it would would not be my uh my milieu we'll just say that yeah well i appreciate it david you know uh you've been a friend of mine for years um like i said whenever i get back out there and bowl that i definitely like to be in your group again um it's been a lot relaxed and chill i made bowling out at nationals as tense as those guys were well, you've supported the show. You've you ran the board. You've donated balls to the Bowler Show tournament, and you've uh, been on the show. So you've done a lot for us. So I just want to uh, give you a forum here, real quick, and thank you for coming on uh, when you did, and thank you for always supporting the show and supporting my stuff. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, tell Kim I said and help the ball as well, and, and uh, we'll see you on down the road. Isn't that what they say? Exactly. All right. Tell uh, tell Jenny and the kids I said hi to. I will. You guys take care, Luke. See ya. Yeah, you too. All right, man. Have a good night. You too. All right, that was Big J from, uh, well, not necessarily from Double J's Pro Shop anymore. It's, uh, yeah. He's, he's moved out of there. His, his brother Garrett, who I believe you know also, is uh, taken over there. So, uh, Luke, we got anybody in the queue here? I think uh, we did earlier. I'm not sure if uh, yeah. James no, has made it right uh, in there. I think we're clear here. Okay. I've got uh, one of our original, I shouldn't yeah. say one of our original, but the original guy who uh, started all this. Like we, we started back on 4404. Yeah. Uh, he had, he had, had, was doing a radio show and found out that there was some time available on Sunday night. And that's when he asked me and a couple others, Brian Strickland and uh, Sean McFarland, to start um, a sports radio show four of us decided okay yeah 4404 let's uh let's do this so the sports schmucks was spawn on spawn on that day and then uh you know nine years later the first bowler show segment and from there you know to where we're here so uh until what's it uh until was it matter i can't remember who it was who brought up that date you know it's been it's been 19 years so it's been it's been a good run and let, let's talk i want to talk about brian strickland real quick here too he's with summit lanes um uh a lot of people know, um, you know, Brian and I have been best friends for a long time, along with our next next guest, James Boyster. But uh, Brian is going in tomorrow for surgery. He's just gone through the chemo and radiation for a lump in his esophagus. So um, he's gotten through all that. It's shrunk. It's going to be uh, a long surgery tomorrow. They're going to take it out. It's going to be four to six hours surgery. And then he's going to be on a feeding tube for a month. So I just want to take a moment and let people know who, a bullet summit or just friends of Brian who haven't heard what's going on, that that is what's going on. If you uh, can keep him in your thoughts and prayers tonight, I would really appreciate it. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, my, my partner, James Poister is saying he did not receive a link. So let me, let yeah, me see. Did. Yeah. Angels. Radio Angel German to stand by. Ago, so. Did, uh, were you doing that or Angel? Or did I? I can't remember. Yeah, let me pull up the message. But Angel sent it to him probably, probably thirty minutes ago. Okay, I'll tell him to check your Facebook Messenger, which he may not be able to do. We may have to, may have to uh, email. Yeah, I, I can ship it to him another way. Yeah, Angel said she sent it in Facebook Messenger. Okay. 
he's read the message and uh this is kind of like this this reminds me of the our real old days luke before uh before you came on board there's times on the radio where you know we were trying to get in contact with people they'd be on the road driving from wherever well there's a mountain in the way now let me get on the other side yeah. of the mountain uh whatever you and i have gone through that i think some of my favorite moments with you is uh, when our original you know first flub where we couldn't get somebody on or they had a problem on there and you're like well let's just facetime them and hold the phone up here and uh, yeah yeah I'll show you. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it like this. And, you know, how many interviews did we do? A half a dozen like that before? Yeah, we did. We did several of them where we just yeah. had to punt and figure it out. And yeah, it, it, that, that makes it fun, though, too. It, it's a little bit different. I, I think it's it's a little different now where people kind of enjoy stuff like that. They enjoy the, the humanizing moments when somebody hey, flubs or screws. And, you know, I, I feel bad sometimes when I just kind of ramble on like I did at Sandra earlier where I didn't really she'd answered all my questions that I had for. Her, and so I had to try to figure something out and I'm just like, eh, 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 eh. and everybody think everybody gets a chuckle out of that. Now they think it's funny. <laughs> and, and when things don't work out, people want to stick with it. And if, if it's, it's kind of funny to watch somebody just, you know, sit here and hold, hold a phone up. And so, yeah, it's, it all worked out. We got it all figured out. And, all right. Well, with that being said, Luke, let's do that with James right now. He just suggested that, so let's uh, let's do that. I can. Uh, I'm going to call him on. Uh, I'm not even sure how yeah. to FaceTime that's not on Facebook Messenger, but I'll figure it out here. Yeah. And then we'll put him on here. Actually, will it be easier on your end, or will it matter? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let me let me give him FaceTime video. Let's see how this works here. Yeah. I don't even know what, to, what I'm doing here. There's me. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah, we'll flip it around when he when he gets on there. Oh, look at him. My goodness gracious. Go. Look at that guy. Yeah. All right. I don't get rid of the picture in picture, or can I? I don't know. You might be able to move right, it around. But... How you doing, man? All right, Chief, you can go. you hear it? You've got an awful old phone, though, so. I'm struggling with the little – you got a little, uh, little extra picture in picture. I'm not sure what's going on there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. There we go. Well, I'll tell you what, Dave. I'll tell you, this is just like the KCXL 1140 days, you know. Absolutely. I, uh, I'm gonna step outside because I am downtown. I'm in a mess here. Uh, how about that, Dave? That's that's perfect. We can hear we can hear you just fine. We we've been uh, talking about the good old days uh, when you and I started a little panoramic view, and uh, some of the technical challenges we had originally. Those were those were the good old days. Yeah, see, I'm going to use my car lights as a spotlight so you can see me clearly, right? Uh, I'm not so, I'm not sure if that's good or not, but go ahead. Well, from 1140, you think about KCXL, what we used to do, and play-by-play uh, -play from the back of a car. Um, you know, we, I was listening to some of the great interviews you've had, and I was thinking about the first interview that I ended up doing subbing for you was with the with the great Mark Roth. Right. And, you know, I still I just put a bunch of stuff uh, in your back. Stand, stand by one second. Stand by. I'm having some problems here. Hold on. Stand by your man. <laughs> so I think Dave wouldn't turn the camera. And he accidentally, uh, he accidentally removed himself. So uh, I'm gonna send him a link to get back in here, and we'll uh, we got a couple more guests here, and we'll we'll finish talking to. Uh, well, we'll finish talking to him when we can get him uh, get him back in here. But, um, yes, where there's a will, there's a way. Thank you, Mister uh, Mister Cripps, for. We're still watching here. There we go. All right, I'm we back. back. <laughs> I'm all over the place. I got rid of James. We we got we got that was uh that was a disaster waiting to happen. So anyway, he like I said, he was uh he was very, very instrumental in the original part of the the uh sports schmucks and the, the bowler show Luke never would have happened without him. So you know, uh, he, well we got we got him in here now. Uh, okay, he, he said he was gonna try to copy it on a browser. There yeah. he is. Now he's all over the place. Hey. Yeah. How we doing? Video here. 
Um, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. But Dave, you know, we were just talking about it. I and I thought about about where I first met you at Strike Market. Then, of course, you and I, I poured a cones and we built built a, a long lasting friendship after that. And <laughs> drove by uh, Joe Walks Lounge that he had. That he had a chance, but uh, Napoleon did. But you know, we went back to Fort. I think when I I think about all the memories of the Bowler Show. So the first one is just try, trying to come up with a name. There, what are we, we going to call this thing? I don't know if you've talked about, about this before. I know you have, but we're just like a gutter, gutter balls, gutter heads, you know, lover's lane. Gutter, we had everything out, out there. Yeah, and, you know, we had the JPEG show, which was kind of the, the parent company of what we just came up with, the Bowler Show. And, you know, you, we you know, I, I think what I did is I just looked, looked on the website. You know, it's like, hey, the domain's available. Let's just get it. And, uh, you know, what you, you've done um, to, to just bringing everybody together, um, you know, I, you know, from seeing you when I first met you when you were 20 years old and to now this to say it's coming in because I don't think it'll ever end. I think, obviously, uh, you can come back and look at the archives and who knows, but you and I, you know, from 1140, from being in mm. probably the worst race in the world to <laughs> doing it out of my office with every single lap, you know, I, I think the reason why we, we mainly stopped is because Radio Shack went out of business because I always had to go McGuffin. <laughs> but great times together, Dave. I, I, I just think it's just awesome that, that uh, you know, the fact that, you know, you're saying, yeah, hold on, I got Norm Duke on and you know, whatever. I mean, that's just awesome. We talk about you know, you know, you know, Johnny Tragley. I think he was talking about it. Just all those are just great. Stories. Yeah, and you, you people remember some of the time you were in Indianapolis. You interviewed bowlers. You interviewed your doppelganger, uh, Tom Smallwood. Who you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. If if you did taken over his uh, the actor on that show, uh, I can't remember the name unfortunately. But uh, if you'd have taken over Roll that with show. Energy. With yeah, I can't even remember. Maybe, maybe Luke remembers. I can't remember the name, but um, but seriously, if, you know, from four four oh four, the times we, you know, broadcast in the back of uh, a back of a car in a pouring rainstorm, a, a football game, a football game from the sidelines, you know, whatever, to where you know we ended up being able to do the Bowler Show, and then that I've told that story many times. You're you're the one who came up with the Bowler Show. I I had I was stuck on gutter talk, and you're like, no, it. Let me see if I can find something better for you here. And I'm glad you talked it off the ledge because that was that was uh that was not as good. And this was, you know, it's an innocuous name, but it just describes what the show is about. It's about the bowlers. You found the domain, you took care of all that stuff, stuff I would have never been able to to take care of because I'm not great at that stuff. But uh without without you, you know, we never would have started. You know, we ended up in in locker rooms and bullpens and dugouts and places that uh I never would have been in without you. So, you know, I, I wanted to take a moment and, and I'm glad you're probably going to be the last guest on here of the night. Oh, actually, I've got uh, Norm or Mark London uh, waiting in the wings here to, to wrap us up, kind of like you used to in the old days. So, uh, Chief, thank, thanks. Seriously, thank you for, for getting me, uh, getting my foot in the door and uh, teaching me some stuff about the radio, making commercials. I remember, you know, uh, just little things like, yeah, the, the phone number is uh, blah, blah. And you're like, no, no, this is how you do it. You do it like this. You repeat it, and uh, you know it sounds a thousand times better. So, uh, thank you, Chief. And it's it's been a good friendship we've had, and you know, you and I years ago we talked about running a business together. We did, and you know, it was just one of those things that kind of came natural with the schmucks. And you talked about Brian. Some prayers definitely go out to Brian out at Summit Lanes uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, he was one of the original. Uh, Summit Lanes also was one of the the major components of making sure we stayed on the radio. And they, they were sponsoring us, giving us, I don't know how many free games to give away. Um, you know, I think in back, you, you know, we, we worked together at Anchorman and sales. And, you know, I don't know if you've talked about Kenny Lyde. You know, the, the past, we talked passing. a little bit tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, just all that. So, you know, David, I, I think it's great. I, you know, say, Hey, you and I are probably not done doing radio stuff together. We'll probably end up doing, Doing the play-by-play of pickleball tournament sometime, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we kind of like the. I can say that, but, but uh, 
You know, <laughs> hey Dave, what you gonna do? Play by play football? In play, we didn't even have rosters of the, the other team. You know, they have, and you know, we just had a lot of fun. And I think the industry owes you a, a big thank you. Well, we've been getting a lot of thanks tonight, and I I know, you know, deep down that what we did for the, for the, at least for the bowler show over the years, as far as bowling concerned, that was a good thing. It gave people a venue to celebrate their achievements and, uh, you know, a, a forum, to, you know, when something serious came up in the bowling world, we talked about that too. We never really, you know, shied away from, uh, too many subjects, it might have been one or two along the line that we, uh, uh, somebody didn't want to talk about, but we always had fun with the guests. Uh, most of the guests were accessible. You know, a lot of guys, especially, you know, just like Norm Duke, just me- I just messaged him at, I don't know, four o'clock this morning and said, Hey, uh, you know, if you want to come on here, let me know. Cause we would love to have you on here. here you know, he came on for, I don't even know, 40 minutes or something. So, um, it, you know, the bowling world gives back to, I, I, you know, me when I was younger, I was a, a hothead and I, you know, I was a taker in the bowling world and, and I don't feel that way anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, uh, no ball yeah. returns were, were, were harmed in the use of this video, but um, I, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at that, but basically um, doing the show and doing the charity events and doing um, the stuff in bowling world, I feel a lot better that I'm not just a, you know, a taker. I've given a lot back now. Yeah. Well, it, it, you get what you take. Okay. Real quick. Count of three. I want you to, when I say three out, our favorite interview we ever had on the radio. Let's see if we have the same one. All right. You're right. All right. Did that have to be bowler related? Okay. One. There's, there could be a lag here just to warn you. Okay. One. One, two, three. Bo- Bozo the Clown. Bozo the Clown. <laughs> <laughs> Only a- All right, we'll talk soon. All right, Chief. Thanks for coming on. Thanks again for, for giving me these opportunities, man. All right. Luke, did you ca- happen to catch who our, our favorite interview was there? Bozo the Clown. We interviewed the original Bozo the wow. Clown. Uh, James uh, James had a different show. He, he had all kinds of shows that he was doing at one time. Really wasn't even involving sports, or he might just invite somebody on that he knew onto the sports show, and then they would talk about sports. But uh, we brought Bozo the Clown on. We ha- I mean, obviously we don't have time tonight or any time. <laughs> there's a million different people that we did, uh, that we interviewed over the years that weren't necessarily even in the bowling world. We just had, we had a lot of fun being on the radio. And uh, it, the like you said, I don't know if you caught the part about the station we are on, but obviously we weren't at a highfalutin station, uh, you know, because mm-hmm. airtime would be uh, money that we couldn't afford. So we were on a small station in Liberty uh, with us. We'll just say a small staff and uh, some different types of people. And uh, we do, we do, you know, we do thank them for the opportunity to be on the radio. But um, it, it was tricky for a while, and then uh, obviously. After two or three years, uh, they, we cut ties with them and just went to the internet, and yeah. uh, uh, you know, got away from the the ra- actual radio part. And you know, there's stuff you have to do on the radio, you know, with the station IDs and uh, watching what you say at every moment and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff, and and also following in line with some of their their views. We'll just say that. But anyway, um, KCXL 1140 did uh, did have us on, so we do appreciate that. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke, let's let's do kind of like we did over the over the years here. I'm actually starting to to lose it here a little bit. I'm sure you're uh, you're ready for dinner and, uh, and yeah, we got a we got one final guest here. Yeah, let's we're, let's wrap it up like we always have. He was a, a guy who uh, was always accessible when we needed him, and there for a while was basically wrapping up every show. So let's bring him in. He's going to bring bring himself in here with his signature uh, signature call. I sure hope my audio works. Can you guys hear me okay? All right. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I was, uh, was kind of cross my fingers. It's an honor being the final guest. I didn't. Uh, this is the first time I've used this laptop to uh, to do this, but uh, I was hoping to use the plug-in mic. But I guess uh, I guess my audio is coming in just fine. So, <clears throat> not sure where the mic on the computer is, but I can tell you, WLS radar weather is showing. Partly cloudy skies in the forecast through Wednesday. <laughs> highs highs up around 40, lows around 32. So watch out when you're driving later at night. Right now, 28 at O'Hare, 29 at Midway, and 30 downtown. Off the loop, 
high above the downtown Burger King on Music Radio WLS. <laughs> wow, I hit the, almost hit the, hit, hit, the, hit the minor peg and everything there. That was, that was fun. Anyway, uh, yeah, we had some, uh, uh, I remember that phone call at uh, the 2017 Lucy being the third man in the booth. That was, uh, <laughs> I just, I, I just, as you remember was, I just had this weird look on my face and just shook my head going, <laughs> yeah, okay, that's, that's fine. I'm, that's, uh, <laughs> How many how many, flat dime, how many flat dimes can you describe in thirty three hours? Uh yeah, yeah, and th those are the ones that I did not leave. So yeah, exactly. th there you go. So um, <clears throat> it's yeah, it's it's kind of a you talking about small town radio. Uh, would people would call up and, and say, uh, not on the air. Sometimes they would, but uh, why didn't you call that uh, that high school game differently? Why don't you sound more enthusiastic? Well. We're broadcasting to the same audience. You know, we, we have to be somewhat objective here. We have to tell what we see. Uh, we're not going to, you know, rip a 16-year-old for making a bad play. We're just going to, you know, mention in, in other words, wording it carefully, as Frank Fame Disc Jockey once said, that you, you have to describe things. And with, again, 33 hours, there's, there's all, you have to employ rain delay theater. Uh, tell you know, tell different stories, bring different people in, and, and just uh, you know, fill in the the time with something. Uh, yeah, you, how many ways can you describe? It? Well, okay, I've looked at this, and you know, no, that's yeah, that but but that's how it goes. <laughs> that's that's how it goes. But I'd say I I I got to say before we go on further that. Uh, as a former radio guy back in the eighties, uh, I, I had, I had a ball on this show, um, dating back to my first time, uh, back in 2012, uh, over 10 years ago, uh, back, I think the first night was when, uh, the Giants beat Detroit for the world series. It was a Sunday night game and I was on later. I was, I was in a, I was in the dental by myself, just watching the game, monitoring the show. And I think I was the last guest that night too. Uh, but you know, and I almost forgot to come on and say, uh, Hey, so good evening. And what can I tell you? And then ramble on into something <laughs> that about the show that day, but, uh, calling the Lucy with you was, was, was a great thrill, uh, helping cover, uh, the Adam Barta versus, versus Waz strike challenge, uh, in Youngstown at, at his home center. As I, I, I myself was on my way to, to, uh, to Syracuse, but, but that was just a, that was just a wonderful time. Uh, glad I was able to be a part of it and bring that to uh, the readers of Bowler's Journal. That's right. I didn't I didn't remember you were on the way there at the same time. I, I'd forgotten about that part, but that uh, that worked out. That worked out perfectly. Yeah, uh, I was due to bowl several days later, uh, so I, I was able to stop and see my dad uh, first for for a couple of days, and then uh, head on up to Syracuse. Yep. Uh, that was, it was, it was good. Those were good times though. So, you know, those are what you look back on Mark when, when all this is over, when the, you know, when we click out of here in a few minutes and say, uh, you know, good night, good luck, good bowling, whatever at the end here, you, you, you're, you're going to have these memories and the, you know, doing the, you know, Adam and I talked a lot about it earlier, obviously, but doing that, doing that event and being able to, do it with him you know to to me one of the best ambassadors in our game um that's you know you just don't forget stuff like that and and you were there and you saw you know you took took all kinds of pictures and uh some of them made it into the bowler's journal correct that's where mm -hmm. oh yeah 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 i think there were five or six that made it uh the, yeah. my favorite one was uh the little girl sitting on the approach and i thought well i can't stand up and shoot this is going to look strange so i got down on the approach put my phone on the approach and took the picture from from her perspective and yeah. and she happened to turn her head and have this smile on her face that, that just lit her face up and i said there, there's a shot right there there's no question yeah. that that one was and see that's where that's where adam takes it a step further it, he you know when i got there i was like okay we're gonna give these families all the money from everything this is gonna be great and then he he goes, well, we're going to take uh, take some money out of what we what we raise and we're going to buy the kids some presents because the kids don't care about 
hey, here's some money to, to pay your bills or whatever. They don't, you know, he, and he thought of that. That's something I hadn't even thought about. And, you know, of course, right before we started, you know, he handed out these presents and, you know, that that's just, that's just who he is. He, th you know, he thinks along those lines and he, you know, he took it a step further than the, uh, you know, than what we were doing overall with the, the contest. And I thank you for not getting any pictures of me uh, almost dying on the approach is, uh, uh, you know, Adam talked about this afterwards. It was a, it was a race, uh, him to 80 strikes and me to 65 because he gave a, uh, a you know, a little bit of handicap because he's Adam Barta and it's in his house. But, uh, you know, he talked to me after. He's like, man, you just didn't stop. And, and you know, I was thinking I was going to rest a little bit. And I was like, you wouldn't stop. And, you know, he's throwing three to my two. I'm, you know, I got the world's slowest approach. So he had that advantage too. But, uh, it, it was really hard. I didn't realize it was going to be that hard. I'd practiced back home. It wasn't that bad. But then when I got there and really had to do it and knew he was over there striking and I could hear the crowd every time he struck, I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, you know, we're going to do this charity event. And I, I'm not going to make it to the end. It's going to put a little damper on it. I almost felt like uh, where's, you know, where's the oxygen mask in the, uh, the tank? Uh, All right, Mark, before we do let you go, talk, talk, tell people what you do. Obviously, they, they know you're right, but tell them a little bit about the publication and your column, Just Paying Attention, and uh, just tell them what you're doing in the bowling world right now. Well, the, uh, the column is Just Paying Attention, and starting in February, it's going to be, uh, it's it's the, we've wrapped up, I just finished the January column yesterday, uh, that concludes the 25th year of the column, it started mm -hmm. February of 1998. In a former publication, the Will County Sportsman out, out of Joliet, Illinois, uh, the late Don Lattice had been bugging me for a while. I said, Mark, you seem to know a lot about the game, a lot about the little ins and outs and little minutia. I would appreciate you writing a column. And I said, no, I'm, I'm a radio, I'm a broadcast guy. I can't stoop to a print level, you know, okay. But uh, so I, after, you know, asking me for a year, I caved in and, and, uh, Began to interview some people. He got me an interview with Jim Stefanich about getting to talk about uh, not only his TV 300 and his career, but also his transition to golf. Uh, that's something that he was quite good at. And as far as the best concentrator, uh, being able to laser focus on his physical uh, activity, he would he was able to do it. You could, in fact, if you would uh, pass him on the street while while driving. You would see him with 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 his earplugs in, and he was just laser focused straight ahead. You you, he wouldn't know if you were driving past him or next to him or whatever. Uh, he was the one who joked that at the time uh, Tiger Woods was getting distracted by this and that uh, after he won the Masters uh, because people were standing literally twenty feet away. He said, "Well, there's something he's not doing uh, focusing, so there's got to be another trick or two." Yep. about the concentration in front of not only millions of people, but also, a, you know, a couple thousand standing within 100 feet of you. So that's, you know, that's going to take some mental willpower as well. Um, later on, uh, once that publication ceased after, uh, I think it was 11 years, uh, then we then, uh, then I moved on to uh, the Bowling News out of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, Tony and Jeannie Franklin saw my saw some work i had done uh for former columnist of theirs clint dacey the dace man i gotta thank him too he was one who uh introduced me to pete mccordick who then uh pete introduced uh told uh, franklin's about uh and dace man told the franklin's about that i wrote a column uh that tony franklin contacted me in, in october of uh, 2012 i began writing every week uh, now the publication is monthly and i'm still contributing it's you know 430 some odd columns later uh, i've been in every single issue uh some topics uh again not quite all bowling you can't uh, do that all the time i take a page out of some uh, old uh, columnists regular col columnists in newspapers they could write a couple days a week about themselves uh, things they were involved with uh, and of course uh, most of them sports uh, some political, you know, Mike Royko, and then uh, I'm looking at guys like Rick Tellender, the most recent example. Uh, but newspapers have kind of gone away from that now. It's more uh, syndicated com uh, commentary and, and news. Uh, not local stuff would be for you know, the local high schools and colleges, but as far as a regular column, 
Uh, that's harder and harder to do because uh, newsrooms are a lot thinner than they used to be. So that is that is how I put the column together. In fact, uh, uh, as you as you read throughout uh, throughout the year, it's still a media based event. In fact, I uh, cited the most recent visit of bowling into a game show, which is a January column. Uh, Terrell Owens was the bowling expert on this particular show, which they had a couple of questions about uh, what happens uh, to the score, the one score, if you cross the foul line as you're releasing the ball. Okay, that's one question. Uh, and they actually cited, according to USBC rules, it's, okay, wow, USBC got a plug on TV. That's, that's cool. Prime time, no less. And then the set, and then the other question that I cited uh, that will have a picture of Owens with the with the graphic. The question is uh, <clears throat> basically it was name one place that does not have a bowling lane, and it was Lady Gaga's house, uh, <laughs> the White House. We know there's one there. Uh, Gaga probably has one. I'm almost surprised they didn't have uh, James Harden's uh, pair of lanes or or John Burkett's pair of lanes. Um, and then there was a, but then there was one, the Leavenworth Prison, and that was the answer to the question: What was one place that you could not? Oh, there was also a cruise ship that has a lane on it too, uh, but Leavenworth does not. And I thought, wow, somebody I really had to come up with the not typical question. They had to be a bowler that had to come up with the research on that one. So that was that, that was that was a nice uh, nice plus. Uh, so once the PBA gets going, we'll talk about ratings and advertisers uh we're getting back into more mainstream advertisers again like we did back in the old old days with roll aids and miller beer and uh Pabst blue ribbon of course is in now and snickers as a few have mentioned but uh it's uh it's it's very different than it was 20 years ago and 20 years before that uh, yeah we were we were probably looking at it now using terminology of today the biggest niche sport out there because we had a 90 minute commercial every saturday between january and april uh, imploring some people to go bowling and others to you know watch every week it was, it was a regular it was a thing that you sat down for uh, no matter what time the show aired in your part of the country but saturday afternoon for 90 minutes it was chris and billy then chris and Bo, and um and it, and it took off from there so uh, as far as that, uh, I'm also, uh, speaking of live streaming, uh, Upper Iowa University women's bowling team is hosting an invitational at Cadillac Extreme Bowling Center in Waterloo in, in two weeks. And I'll be helping a friend of ours, Andrew Pfeffer, uh, bowling with the Pfeff. We're doing the live stream from, from there that weekend. And, uh, it'll great. be nice to get back, uh, to work out the pipes a little bit and uh, blow them out describe some bowling action for everybody and get back into uh, uh, what college bowling is. It's a combination of a big high school rivalry football or basketball game, and there happens to be bowling going on. So I'm re really looking forward to that week. All right, Mark, I'll tell you what, uh, let's, let's wrap this up. I'm going to let you finish, uh, finish how you want to finish here. You're going to be the last guest on the, the bowler show. And uh, Luke and I will obviously take a few moments after that to wrap everything sure. up. But, uh, thank you for seriously the the times that you spent there. You know, to be perfectly honest, there was times where in the bowling world there wasn't a whole lot going on that week. And uh, having you uh, at the end of the show, just just like Canizaro, you know, there's times where you just can't book enough bowlers. There's just not a lot going on, or they well, can't I, get on, or whatever. And you were always there uh, when we needed you, and you you were there to uh, take up the time at the end. And you and I talked bowling, and we talked Steelers, we talked Chiefs, we talked everything so thank you for your contributions sure, absolutely show. oh by the way oh they didn't get in though yeah the no they didn't but uh i got the commemorative franco franco version and uh here's an icy light to you my friend that was sad that, that was for it to happen right before a celebration oh yeah days before that was just it was yeah. just heartbreaking it uh, but we got to, uh, the nation got to know uh the type of person franco was in the community always giving back always making sure that uh uh, we get better uh, lending his name to charities. I mean, I, I don't think he ever said no to anybody yeah. uh, with, with a reasonable request. But uh, that's something else that we talked about to our football teams. In fact, I mentioned that in the January column that uh, we did. Uh, we, we talked you know, more about uh, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, the radio interview, the radio chat, 
is you sit down around a table, you sit down next to somebody at a bar, and you just talk. That's what it really is. It's yeah. it's nothing. Uh, might be some finger pointing, uh, depending on the personality, but really, it's you you sit down and you, and you talk and you listen and you talk and then you listen some more. Uh, it's, it was just, it was just a lot of fun to be on the show. It was it was a thrill. It was an absolute. Uh, a career highlight, and I'm glad I was able to lend my name to it. It's, it's just a lot of fun. I thank you and JP and Luke for uh, bringing it to life, and uh, now we have to fly it into the ground. Fortunately. Yeah, I'm trying to center myself here a little bit, but <laughs> that's something we uh, didn't have to worry about on the radio, Mark. We didn't have to worry about our, our face or where we were located or where the FaceTime chat thing was pointing or whatever. I, I got some stuff here in my basement that probably – Made it on there. Luke will cut that out later. I'm sure he'll be right on top of that. But anyway, no big deal. Anyway, Mark, once again, thank you for coming on the show tonight. Thank you for being a big part of the show with the years, and, and you take care, and we'll catch up with you on the other side somewhere. It was a lot of fun. Guess what, folks? That's our show, and at least my part, I am out of here. Take care. All right. That is a perfect, down the road. perfect way to end. That's the perfect way to end the, down the road. Show. With our, our final guest, he was the final guest many times. Mark, you have a good night, sir. Good night. All right, Luke, uh, two, three, four hours in here. It went pretty fast uh, to me. Yeah. I don't know about you. I know. I really uh, did. It really did. It's, uh, you know, obviously you kind of let me take over most of the stuff tonight because, uh, you know, from a lot of the people back in the day that I dealt with. Um, I, I just want to thank you, too. I know we uh, – weren't always able to get on every week. There was a, you know, that's part of the reason of our demise, I guess you would say, yeah. is, you know, we have, we have other things going on and, and it's just, it's just hard. It was, I thought, I thought it'd be easy. And, and we want to thank Aaron's family fun center, Mike Soroka too, oh, yeah. for letting us use uh, the den there for a while. I thought it would be easy yeah. to just run a tournament and run over to Aaron's and, uh, you know, it'd be just that easy. But it, it was, it was hard to run double tournament on Sunday and then get done in time depending on where we were and get back to there or get back to wherever. But, uh, you know, I, I thanked Angel and chat, um, for her time. You know, she, she doesn't care about any recognition or anything. She likes doing stuff behind the scenes, but I don't know how many things she had to send out tonight, but we want to thank her for her, <laughs> yeah. her support. Uh, you know, I'm sure she's going to, you know, she, she was happy to do it, of course, but I'm, I think she's going to be glad she doesn't have to mess with some of that stuff. And some people, uh, Hey, I can't, I don't know what I'm doing on here, but, yeah. Um, you know, not to, not to wax too much poetic here, but, uh, you know, uh, I love the form. Actually, I love being down and in, in, in studio with you too there, but uh -huh. it's obviously yeah. with our other challenges with time, uh, the three hour round trip yeah. for me was like, eh, is it really worth yeah. uh, me sitting right next to him there and, uh, having to fend off the dogs. Of course, the, the dogs were never there until after the show, but, um, and I do miss the dogs, you know, we saw, we saw children today on the show we heard children yeah. we heard dogs we saw dogs uh -huh. uh, you know we can do a lot with this form and i i liked i liked the video part i really did i think it's it, it adds to it you can see people's expressions and 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 uh you know you can do things you that you can't just do on the radio or on the internet without uh your venue and uh you know an angel's uh, fanboy and right now she talked to, to parker bone and duke and belmont even just messaging you know, yeah. she's, she's like you with a, boy, I, I, I feel bad. We never got Verity on, but yeah, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. So yeah, you'll, have to, yeah. you'll have to work on her for the breakdown pair or, or something, uh, some other venue in the future. Yeah. Hopefully there's a, uh, last year they had a tournament. The PWBA had a tournament at North rock and we were into in 2022 and we were in Springfield bowling Ozarks that weekend, or I was going to go down there to that. However, they have three tournaments in Waterloo uh, in August, and hopefully I'm going to make it up to, to those. I'll, I'll, I'll cross my fingers. And I've got some uh, now. Again, I figured out uh, uh, Jesse Bauer knows uh, Verity really well. And then uh, now that I know what, what a huge fan Julia Bond is, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sure I, I can work some angles there. I can. <laughs> you, uh, when she said that, I thought, "Oh wow, that's awesome. That's uh, Luke's going to like that." And, and uh, you know, uh, I had Diana on way back, um, but Verity, I know that was you know, and Daria never made it on. So of their triumvirate, only only Diana yeah. was on the show. But 
uh, you know, that's the thing. They, they have commitments. They have stuff going on, too, and unfortunately uh, weren't able to make it ever. And they, that, that was a little bit, uh, to be perfectly honest, that it seemed like it was harder to get guests on this time around. I, I'm not sure mm-hmm. why, but uh, that was that was part of the part of the demise, too, where I it just felt like it was hard. You know, it felt like I was pulling teeth sometimes to get people uh, to come on. And, and like I said, we, we relate because we have the same challenges in, in bowling. So, yeah. And Angel also, you know, Angel's got those phone numbers now, so she's got those numbers in her phone. Um, I would look out if I was a PB3 or Norm or, or, or Belmo. You might be getting random uh, random stuff from her, but uh, seriously, yeah, yeah. Angel, thank, you. thank you for doing your stuff for the show. It's It's been invaluable. Uh, Luke, same thing. Thanks for, for doing the tech side. And uh, the obvious part when I came to the part of the interview where it was time to talk about tech talk, it was uh, – it was time for you to take over, and uh, you know, you you added a lot of stuff that I just I just can't add. I'd be like, hey, uh, what do you think of this new ball? Oh, uh, did we ever yeah. send a thing to Toby? I guess Toby Myers isn't going to make it on tonight, but uh, yeah. talk a little bit about what he did uh, here last night. Yeah, so uh, 870, 870, not seventeen seven zero, with the uh, the absolute. I think it was two ninety two eighty three hundred. Yeah, or he, 280, 290, 300. I don't yeah, know. He went, he went up each game and he uh he never lost any count on the night. That's hard to do. Yeah, and that that's the that's the interesting thing is that yeah, he could have he missed twice. Uh, 280, obviously that's in the, the second frame, and then 290, that's in the first frame. So everything else was everything else was a strike. So 34, 34 out of 36 with the absolute. So just just getting to that point, that's uh something that's a ball I need to get. I saw You've uh, drilled up an absolute and a rev. Well, I hope I'm saying this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolute, absolute and revenant. They're both uh, they're both pretty good. We had to had Tobias change the change the surface on his too, but that's that's kind of normal, you know. Uh, box surface is just a suggestion. If it doesn't work for you out of the box, just change something, and that's what that's what he did, and uh, obviously it worked out. So, yeah, yeah, big. I mean, that's a that's a huge. Great. I mean, that's the next best thing to 900. That's, uh, I mean, we had Stephen Casella on earlier talking about that. I think, you know, at 34 out of 36, that's just getting tapped a couple times. And yeah. so, yeah, eight, 870 is a monster number for anybody with anything. So, yeah, yeah Storm Dog up here to Storm Dog. Come here, buddy. Here, Storm hey, Dog. Storm Dog. I got over here. Come on up. Hi, buddy. I don't need I a treat for him to jump on me. He come right, right yeah. up on me. Uh huh. Storm dog. Come here, buddy. Angel, you want? You want? You think Angel want to get in the picture? Yeah. Does Angel want to get in the picture? Get in the picture, Angel, so we can thank yeah. you. Bro. Yeah. It's the last show. Come on. She got the treats. Come on in. Yeah. We we talked about it earlier. I've got to get my the, the crazy Mexican woman in the. Yeah, I did. I didn't know that. I, I, so, is it Angel? Is that how I say it, or am I saying Angel, that right? Angela? Actually, it's Angela. Angela. Yeah. The, no, I never knew girls, that. Yeah, what's, the what's, girls' version is supposed to be Angela, but my mom didn't want that, so it's Angel. What's what's but, the yeah, what's the connection to Mexico? Um, yeah. it's Second so my generation. dad. Yeah, my dad is a hundred percent, and I believe it's his grandparents that came from Mexico through Ellis Island and the whole shebang. Oh, cool. So my grandma had what? to go to what? school to what? learn what? English. That's uh, that's interesting. Oh, look at Storm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Storm, hey, Storm, I miss you. Sorry, I'm not. <laughs> he's he's very concerned. Pig pig. <laughs> yeah, he seems like it. He's uh he's a pig handful. Pig. You guys, you guys don't just rescue little poodles and stuff. You take on eighty pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We don't do anything little. <laughs> no. Oh, thank you. All right, Luke, you got anything else? I think uh, I think I'm tuckered out from uh, this final. Yeah. You know. It's something I wanted to do to make sure we got, you know, the people that wanted to come on or could come on. I've, I've got a whole list of people here, unfortunately, and weren't able to make it, but we, you know, we think we, we got a lot of people in here. I think we had 15, 16, 16, diff- seven, almost 20 different people that uh, signed on tonight. So, well, that's awesome. So, all right, well, let's uh, wrap this up. I'll let you got you got anything you want to say before we end the show here? Nope, I got my uh, last little sip of whiskey here. We got some uh, chow waiting for us, and it was—I mean—it was a great time. 
Uh, I think it's just one of those things that we got. It, it's a good thing that we've got so much going on that, that this didn't quite fit. Um, but at least if nothing else, like I said in the, uh, like I put down in the description, it was a, it was a pretty cool victory lap at least for, for you to be able to, to go back and talk to some people that you haven't talked to in a while and kind of revisit things and shake some things up and talk to some new people. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a good time. It's a, Sad that it can't continue on, but at the same time, it was a great thing that it happened. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll I'll wrap I'll wrap us up here because I, you know, I, I spent the time on this show over the years and never thought about, you know, any impact or you know, I knew I was doing some things that were good for bowlers to where we could get you know celebrate their achievements, especially and and you know, getting pro bowlers on here and having them talk to. Uh, talk to the people that, that are the fans. I, I knew that was a good thing, but until we decided to end it, I never really thought, Hey, that's, you know, that's it. And then, you know, did I do enough on here? Did we, did we, I, I feel good about um, the ball, the whole body of work. Now there's certain things, you know, there's times I could have prepared better for stuff. I could, you know, and if obviously if this was a paying position, I might have done things yeah, yeah. over the year, uh, but I did, you know, I did the best that I could. Uh, you know, and sometimes the, the resources were tricky between communications, technology, uh, radio stations, whatever. Um, you know, there was challenges all along the line. And but the whole, you know, the whole, the whole thing is it's it's called the bowler show. So it was for the bowlers. I'm a bowler. You're a bowler. Um, but we allowed bowlers to come on the show. And it didn't you know, it could be anybody. We, we didn't we didn't care if you did something in the bowlers world. Um, we were going to have you on the show, and we tried to do the best we could. Uh, Perry Riley, I want to mention him real quick. He's always been uh, a big supporter of the show, and he's been in the chat a lot. And you you know a lot of your guys that, that have been here and here also. And we appreciate uh, the people in the chat. We, we really never turned this into too much of a, a show about the chat. We, we, we had, you know, it was more interview-driven. That's just the way it was. Yeah. So a lot of yeah. times we didn't get to the chat, but we do appreciate everybody. Uh, who supported us and, and Perry always has, and he's always been a big supporter. So um, I guess that's all I've got, Luke. I, I could sit here and talk forever about everybody who has yeah. uh, been involved or whatever, but we thank, we just want to thank everybody. And uh, we want to thank storm bowling, of course, our, our main sponsor, first and foremost, for everything they've done for the show and done for me in, in particular over the years. And uh, we'll, we'll keep on keeping on, but for now, this is, uh, this is going to wrap it up. This is the final edition of the Bowler Show uh, for Luke Rosedahl. I am Dave Waswell, and we will see you on the lanes.